From the combined newsrooms of KARK4 and Fox 16, breaking news coverage. After spending more than two decades on death row, two more Arkansas inmates are scheduled to die tonight by lethal injection. He doesn't deserve any mercy. Marcel Williams and Jack Jones, both killing young mothers. Their heinous crimes branded on the moms of their victims' families. I still remember everything like it was yesterday. And now. As the clock winds down on their executions, people who knew and loved the victims are hoping that after tonight, some of their hurt will finally end. I don't want to live another day knowing that he's alive. And good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Donna Terrell. We have just learned death row inmate Jack Jones has exhausted all of his pending legal challenges. We U.S. Supreme denying his request for a stay of execution. This means he will likely be put to death at 7 o'clock tonight as scheduled. Marcel Williams still has remaining legal challenges, although his execution is still planned for 8-15 tonight. Now here's some background on both of these inmates' crimes. Jones was found guilty in the death of Mary Phillips, who was beaten, raped, and choked with an electrical cord from a coffee maker in June of 1995. Her daughter, 11-year-old Lacey, was with her at the office where she worked because she had a dental appointment on that day. Lacey was also beaten. Jones was convicted of capital murder the very next year. Williams was found guilty of abducting and killing Stacy Erickson as she stopped at a Jacksonville gas station in November 1994. Williams made her withdraw money from several ATMs. He eventually raped, beat, and choked her and then buried her body along the Arkansas River in North Rock. The state initially scheduled eight executions over an 11-day period before the end of April when its supply of one of the lethal injection drugs expire. Uh, the first three executions were canceled because of court decisions. A fourth death row inmate, Liddell Lee, was executed on Thursday, the first execution to happen in the state of Arkansas since 2005. A lot of legal issues at play concerning these executions, which we have seen last-minute changes for sure. My co-anchor, Kevin Kelly, he's live outside the Cummins unit in Lincoln County. Kevin, what are you hearing at this very moment? It, all systems go, Donna. Uh, Jack Jones uh, scheduled to be executed in less than 30 minutes. Arkansas Department of Correction taking all the necessary steps and following the procedures to make that execution take place unless we hear from the United States Supreme Court uh, uh, within the next few minutes or so. But again, it is all systems go. In fact, uh, our very own Jesse Tenura was inside the media room just moments ago when they announced the media pool. I want to bring her in because she's going to have to go back inside shortly. Let's begin with the first scheduled execution, uh, Jack Jones. Kind of walk us through the process because not too many people have the access that you've had. So the process of selecting the media witnesses. So um, actually, since there are two executions scheduled tonight, back to back, these double executions, they had all the media witnesses decide at once. And so they started with the Associated Press. They gave their names. They started the X with the newspaper people and then the online electronic journalists, which are radio, TV and online people. And so um, AP decided theirs pretty quickly. So did we. And the newspaper had um, a couple pull out of the this little bowl to decide who would sit in on Williams. But now it's officially decided. OK, so for Jack Jones, we have somebody from a, a local T station, THV, who will witness it. Andrew DeMilla with the Associated Press and then Tracy uh, Whitaker with the Daily Citizen. That will those will be the witnesses for the execution of Jack Jones if everything goes according to procedure. Now, at 8.15, the second execution is scheduled to take place. Of course, we're talking about Marcel Williams, and that is one that you get to witness firsthand. This will be your first witness in an execution. Yes, and it's something that I've heard from people who have witnessed executions before, that it's something you can mentally prepare for as long as you think is necessary. But when you go into that room, you kind of have to put everything aside and say, this is my job as a journalist. You kind of have to remove that human aspect for a little because it almost becomes too much and you're not able to take as many notes. I think one of our anchors, Bob Clausen, said it best. He said that the reason why we are here today is not because a man is dying. It's because this man has killed someone. And this is the way that the justice system, justice system currently works. And so we are here tonight to see that end. And so um, 
people just asked me, they were like, you know, do you feel ready? And I said, yes, because this is my responsibility, this is my job, and it's my duty to bring, you know, to our viewers exactly what happened. In the lower courts leading up to tonight's decision to execute these two individual inmates, their attorneys had argued several times that lethal injection protocol, at least for these two individuals, could result in cruel and unusual punishment, mostly in light because they are obese, because they suffer from hypertension, because they have diabetes. The list was long. When you were going through kind of the reporter briefing situation mm -hmm. as witnesses, were you each given kind of a specific assignment as to what you need to be focusing on? So that those kind of pecking orders didn't actually come from the Arkansas Department of Correction. The Associated Press guys have been working great with us because a lot of them have witnessed executions before. And so they brought us all to this table, all six of us that would be witnessing these two executions, and kind of talked about exactly what we would see, what we would be seeing, exactly what we would need to be recording from the moment that they pushed the curtain aside and were able to see one of these inmates to the moment that the coroner says the time of death. And so they were saying that once you get in the room, right in the very front, front row, there's three spots for these media witnesses, and from there you just have to take good notes because they don't, you know, they don't give kind of a play-by-play -play of exactly what happens. It's very quiet. They do it very peacefully um, in a way to kind of give some re respect to the inmate, too. Did you see that same type of uh, procedure for Liddell Lee last week who was executed? I mean, we're talking about different individuals, different body sizes. Um, and, and we know that that potentially could be a factor in tonight's executions. Yeah, and so the, all they could tell us right now was what happened in Lee's case. So all that information was from last week from one of the Associated Press reporters. And so obviously they said to take into account today um, all of these concerns that you just talked about. And so they were saying pay special close attention to his IVs, pay special close attention to his chest going up and down, pay special close attention at how apart his breaths are, different things like that. And so definitely keep a closer eye on them um, as it goes through the process to just not take your eye off of this man. Okay, so you'll, you'll be watching, uh, obviously, Marcel Williams, but the first scheduled inmate uh, up for execution is uh, Mr. Jones. Um, do we know where he is at this point? Has he been transported to the chamber yet, or do we know? I have not been told that as of yet. Since I came out here a little bit before 6.30, the newest information I had at that point was that at 6.30, the media witnesses would be taken to the death chamber. Um, right now, that's all I know. So um, he should still be um, in one of those holding cells next to the death chamber next to the death chamber, but I was able to find out. Um, you did mention that they do suffer from diabetes, both of them. Um, it sounds like Jones had it worse because he actually had to have one of his legs amputated because of it. And so the ADC director, she said last week um, during testimony on Friday at a hearing that he would actually be rolled in on a restraint chair, a restraint wheelchair um, into the death chamber, and then they would move him onto a gurney or something from there. So that's how he will be brought in. I'm just not sure if that has and taken for, place. And forgive me, this is for Jones, correct? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I know you have a lot of work that still needs to be done. I need to need uh, you need to go back inside the media center to, to cover to, to witness some history as well. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep us informed. We appreciate your time. All right. Will do. So that's the situation here, uh, Donna. As you well know, uh, both inmates have already had their last meals. If you're wondering what that consisted of, uh, it was a, a combination of fried chicken. We're also told that they had milkshakes, potato logs. Uh, Jack Jones had three butterfingers, a chocolate butterfinger, milkshake, and fruit punch. But uh, as of right now, it is 6.40, so we're literally 20 minutes away from the first execution uh, to take place. Jack Jones, who's been on death row for more than 20 years um, and has denied clemency in the past and said he doesn't want to spend another day in what he referred to as this rat hole, an earlier testimony that was read by his attorney during the clemency hearing, which he was not at. But right now it is all systems go here at the Cummins unit. Back to you. Okay, we're about 20 minutes away from the scheduled execution that is supposed to happen uh, to Jack Jones. As uh, you heard Kevin just mentioned there. And I have Fox 16's Marcy Manley with us. Marcy's been doing an excellent job of looking into the legalities of all of these scheduled executions. And certainly we want to talk about this one tonight. And you know what, Marcy, one of the first things I want to start with, because a lot of people have asked this particular question, and Kevin was talking about it. Jack Jones said if he were to get clemency, he would deny it.
and he said who would want to spend the rest of their lives in this, as he called it, rat hole another day or another 20 years. My question is, then why fight so hard to keep him from, having, from, from being executed? Well, I think there are two different issues at play here, um, and, and it's hard. It's, it would be difficult to read the attorneys' minds. They have privileged conversations with their clients as to um, why they make the challenges that they do, and it may not only just be for Jack Jones' benefit, but for the benefit of precedent for other inmates as well. Um, and just... Um, in recognition that the system has a way that it is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. um, but secondarily to that, Jones in his contesting um, the protocol in particular is saying that this might not work and, um, and that it might actually leave him disabled or in a vegetative state if it weren't to work as it should, leave him with brain injuries, leave him permanently um, you know, disabled even more so than he already is. And so on the one hand, um, he you don't necessarily say he's asking for a stay of execution period because he's challenging the protocols and has actually yeah. submitted other ideas for how okay. the state might carry out his you. execution. And of course all of this because of his obesity in size as well as his health and the medications that he's currently taking. Right. He has um, a confluence of sort of comorbidity issues, and mm -hmm. so um, those are things that he's raised, all of those things that you mentioned. Um, but, yeah, he's been on a number of medications for quite a while. They're concerned that um, the midazolam in particular won't um, sedate, him. sedate him in the way that it might other people because of his um, history with, with having to use um, different narcotics to control pain and different issues like that. So. Um, um, those, are, those are sort of the issues he's contesting. One of the things that caught my attention right away, actually starting yesterday, was all of these legal challenges that their attorneys were submitting to the different courts kept coming back denied, denied, mm -hmm. denied, denied. And it's a little different than what we've seen over the past executions leading up until this point. Certainly some of the, um, you know, in terms of the drug, in terms of the, the drug company that was fighting, all of those things are in the past. So now we're just dealing with their personal issues. It, it's interesting though to me that we're at a point now where so many of these challenges are just denied, denied, denied. Well, you've went through, I mean, um Jack Jones and Marcel Williams um, were different parties to some of those other cases that have already okay. been decided. And so they don't have to go through that process because it's, it's already went up to the Supreme Court and, and been handled. And so, yeah, now it's, it's mainly, it's only on the merits of their own cases, the merits of their own legal processes, the merits of their own health and that sort of thing. So that's one thing that we're just later in the process of some of the challenges that are that are taking place. Mm -hmm. But we have seen, you're right, that we are seeing these um, challenges move much more quickly. By 2.30 p.m. this afternoon, we had answers back from all of the pending yes. cases. And they were, and then it was just, are they going to appeal that and are they going to seek a stay of execution or petition um, for certiorari from the U.S. Supreme Court? And, we, and so that's what we were waiting on. And now we've gotten an answer on um, Jack Jones and in the Supreme Court denying the pending requests that he had mm -hmm. um, and so we've even got an answer now much earlier than we we did on other nights I'm sorry I'm looking up at the clock just to kind okay. of take a look at where we are this evening and so yeah much sooner um, and much more quick um, response times from these courts but again much of this has already been litigated and in some ways the courts when they're particularly the Eighth Circuit at the federal level is saying this is piecemeal litigation it's it, their delay tactics. Mm -hmm. We don't allow this type of, of they behavior. They recognize that. Um, it's it's debatable, but that is okay. how the, the court views that. Okay. And so um, I don't want to say that that is absolutely what's going on, but that is the way the court has viewed it, and they sided with the state in that. And clearly the U.S. Supreme Court, when it came to Jack Jones' case, also felt that it didn't entitle him to a stay of execution. You know, I, I find it very interesting because you do have a little background and you seem to understand all of this stuff so well compared to, uh, to, to many of us. Has there been anything, let's just talk about these two cases right here, mm -hmm. anything that has surprised you? I think everyone um, was surprised by, by the claim of, of obesity because it does seem sort of um, 
outrageous at one point, but then you start thinking about interactions with with drugs and how and how they work with the um, individual's body type. And so, yeah, let yeah. me jump in here. Um, this van that you're looking at right here, this is at the Cummins unit, and what, from what we understand, there are witnesses inside of this vehicle. That means they are headed over to the witness mm -hmm. facility, which is right there um, at the execution chamber. Eventually, uh, once uh, Jack Jones is prepped, once he's connected to all of the IVs and everything is ready, then they will be sitting there. The curtain will open and then they will actually witness the execution. The reason that is, is important, and that's something that's in state law, it is because there should be media witnesses as well as citizen witnesses to make sure that things are done correctly. I mean, um, whether you are for or against an execution, the last thing you want is to not know what happened or to find out or hear that maybe it wasn't carried out right and then there's controversy over that. This way, it allows people to actually see what's happening. I'm gonna switch right back out to Kevin Kelly because we are getting closer. It's now 647 mm -hmm. and this execution is scheduled to start at seven o'clock. Kevin? Yeah, and just to follow up on what you and Marcy were talking about a little bit earlier, that was, in fact, uh, the, the van transporting the witnesses over to the execution chamber. It's a very, very short ride, roughly about 50 to 100 yards. We have seen, as a result of last week, witnesses being transported over to the execution chamber only to be stopped before they even arrived because of recent stays that had been issued by the U.S. Supreme Court. But that was last week. This is a different week and a different set of circumstances in play. Jack Jones scheduled to be uh, executed here in roughly 13 minutes. Uh, we talked to Jess Noor a, a while ago, and she was saying that according to the Arkansas Department of Correction, because of Jack Jones' medical condition, he will be wheeled into the execution chamber, strapped down in a wheelchair before being transported from the wheelchair up into the gurney. At that point, the IV team, along with the executioner and deputy director, will begin the process of inserting two separate IVs, one in each arm, and hopefully that will be a smooth process, at which point saline will be administered, and once they establish that and the flow is deemed good enough, they will sit and wait for the warden to give the green light. Of course, that has to come all the way down from uh, from higher ups, including the governor and the attorney general. So that is kind of where we are at this point in time. The last meal has been served for Jack Jones. And Donna, as you have mentioned uh, at the top of our webcast here, uh, the crime that he was convicted and tried on and found guilty of doing uh, horrific in nature, uh, involving a, a young, beautiful woman who was beaten, raped, choked, and uh, the jury found him to be guilty of it, and he is now uh, paying for his crime. Back to you. Yeah, and her daughter, Lacey, who was there when it happened, uh, when her mother yeah. was killed so tragically, um, to this very day says that she doesn't want to live another day with Jack Jones breathing. Um, as I mentioned before, obviously there are people for the execution. There are people against. The people who are against, some of them anyway, are protesting at the governor's mansion as they have over the last few other executions. We want to take it out to Charmaine Nero so she can kind of give us an idea how many people are out there, what they're telling her, the mood, the atmosphere. Charmaine, I remember uh, on uh, Thursday, once the execution of Liddell Lee happened, there were lots of tears shed. That's exactly right, Donna. Now, out here, the scene is, like I said last time during Lee's execution, there was a tension in the air. A lot of people, you know, und a lot of new developments coming right now, as you can see behind me. They are having a prayer service, very similar to uh, what they were doing during Lee's execution as well when they were waiting. So right now, they are having a prayer service for saying uh, prayers and just starting to him now to for the uh, death row inmates, um, Jack Jones and Marcel Williams. Now, last time we came out here, Marcel Williams' teacher was here. She is not in this crowd right now, but I'm just gonna come back in the shot now, but they are saying a prayer right now. Um, next time that I uh, come back to you guys, I'll make sure and bring one of the 
protesters over to see exactly why they're here and what they're expecting for tonight. Um, get to send it back to you guys. Yeah, I certainly do understand you can't really uh, talk to anyone right now. They're praying, they're singing, they're doing exactly what one would expect for them to to do at this point. We're going to check with you again. It's now 651, so we are getting closer and closer to that 7 o'clock hour. Once again, Jack Jones is scheduled to die at 7 o'clock tonight. He was convicted of killing Mary Phillips in Bald Knob back in 1995. Her daughter Lacey was 11 years old at the time. She was with her mother. The reason she was there, her mother was at work at an office. And the reason Lacey was there is because Lacey had a dental appointment on that day, so she was with her mother. And uh, from articles that I've read about what happened is Jack Jones, he tied them both up, and then he took Lacey into a nearby bathroom and tied her to a chair. And that's when he raped, beat, and strangled Mary Phillips with an electrical cord from a coffee pot. If you go back into history and look at some of his testimony, he actually said he choked her with his bare hands, and then he used the electrical cord, I guess, to choke her some more. He has said um, he was one of the people who was, and you're looking at Lacey, Lacey Phillips right now, bald knob, of course, where this happened. Uh, Jack Jones has said that he didn't want to spend another day in, in the rat hole of a prison, that he called it. And uh, during his trial, one of the things he told the judge was, just go ahead and kill me, get it over with. That was more than two decades ago that he said that. And it looks as though we are reaching a point where that very well could happen. We're going to take a look at how this whole lethal injection process happens. My co-anchor, Kevin Kelly, put a story together so that we get a better understanding of it. Here it is. According to the state's lethal injection procedure, the executioner will enter the chamber prior to the inmate's scheduled time of execution. They will inspect what's called the injection drug box, ensuring all chemicals are accounted for. The gurney will be positioned so the deputy director and executioner can directly see the inmate's face and IV infusion site. At that point, the condemned inmate will be brought in and strapped down. The IV team, who are licensed and have at least two years' experience, will then insert two IV bags containing normal saline. When the flow is secure and safe, the warden will give the green light. The IV team will first administer two syringes containing 250 milligrams of midazolam, a sedative that is supposed to make the inmate unconscious. If the inmate is not unconscious, backup syringes of midazolam and saline will be given in a secondary infusion site. There will then be a five-minute waiting period, at which point the deputy director will confirm the inmate is in fact unconscious. Once that is determined, the second drug will be administered. Two syringes containing 50 milligrams of vecuronium bromide, a paralytic. Then comes the third and final drug. Two syringes of 120 milliequivalents of potassium chloride will begin to flow, ultimately causing the inmate's heart to stop. And that is, of course, if everything goes according to plan. Should there be any problems, whether it be with a collapsed vein, an IV infusion site, the deputy director will immediately draw the curtain, and hopefully the IV team will be able to correct the problem and the execution will resume. That is how it's supposed to take place, but we all know a thing can happen, and there is a, a, a lot of eyes watching the scheduled execution of Jack Jones, which is scheduled to take place and begin in six minutes. I would imagine at this point in time, based on previous executions from last week, that he is, in fact, in the execution chamber. We'll have to wait and see, and, of course, the witnesses are in place, and other individuals who have decided to take a part of this include the victim's family joining us now, Stephanie Sharp, and I know you've had an opportunity to to at least find out where these people are going to be stationed and whether or not they want to see this. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we're actually just learning a little bit more um, about uh, who all is here. But we were told that um, you know the victim's families were here. We're still trying to figure out if uh, Stacy Erickson's family is here um, on the prison grounds. However, we do know that the other. Uh, 
family are here. Um, we were we were speaking earlier with um, Lacey. Um, we were told that she's here somewhere on the prison grounds. However, she doesn't want to see the execution of uh, Jack Jones. Now that's coming from a newspaper reporter that uh, she's close with. Um, and they were telling us earlier before we came over here to the prison, um, but uh, we were told that Lacey is here somewhere and she is just waiting to hear, you know, when Jack Jones um, is uh, will die. Uh, we were told that uh, Mary's husband, uh, he is also here. He does want to watch the execution. That's also coming from this reporter we were speaking with earlier. Um, so he is expected to be in that death chamber. Um, as we know from um, last week, whenever that we did have the execution of Liddell Lee, we were told that the media witnesses were the last ones in place in the death chamber. Correct. So the families were there and then the media witnesses walked in. So if the families are in place at this moment right now, I mean, it's 656. We don't know yet, but we were told that uh, Mary's husband is expected to witness um, the execution. All right. Thank you for the update there. And it's my understanding, Donna, that if uh, the, the, the family victims are here, the victim's family members are here, that they will be in a separate room, not exactly sitting down with the witnesses from the media, as well as the other witnesses out of respect. Uh, and they will, uh, those who choose to watch the execution will do so via satellite. But we are now approaching the top of the hour. It is 6.57. The execution scheduled to begin officially within three minutes. They're probably waiting at this point in time uh, for the green light to be given from the warden, at which time the midazolam will begin to flow. And, of course, uh, because of Jack Jones's medical history, his background that has been in the spotlight a lot as of late leading up to this execution, uh, people will be watching very closely to see if there is any reaction from the uh, from the inmate Jack Jones to see if this is a smooth procedure if it is uh, like Liddell Lees was last week Donna as you know the process from start to finish including that five minute waiting period to make sure the inmate is unconscious lasted only about 12 minutes so if this is a, a, a smooth execution if you will and if it does in fact get the green light to move forward we could be looking at anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes before we get an official word from the Arkansas Department of Correction. Donna? Yeah, you know what, Kevin? You, I'm looking at exactly what you're talking about. Uh, for Liddell Lee, the chemicals were administered at 11.45, and then the cor coroner pronounced his death at 11.56. It took exactly 11 minutes for that process to happen. Getting back to, uh, to what's going on right now, this is the point where we start getting limited information. It, it, the, the, the process could be going on as we speak, but I did see a tweet here from the Arkansas, or actually this is from Mitch McCoy, um, saying that uh, ADC spokesperson Solomon Graves is waiting by the phone, the same phone that alerted him that Monday, Monday's execution was completed. I guess he meant Thursday's execution was uh, was completed. That's what he meant to say there. Um, but anyway, so we haven't gotten the official word that the execution has either started or that it has ended or what the status will be. But Kevin, you and I both know, you know, the one execution with Liddell Lee may have lasted for 11 minutes. However, you know, the attorneys have been talking about these different health issues with Jack Jones in terms of his diabetes, his weight, all of these different things. You know, one execution is not necessarily the same as the next. I mean, I, I'm no expert when it comes to executions, but I do know there's been a lot of concern about this man's weight and his uh, medications that he's been taking and how his body will react to, to, the, to the execution drugs. And, and Donna, I'd like to also add, if we go back a week ago on this very day, Don Davis was scheduled to be executed at 7 p.m. straight up. However, a decision to halt and stay his execution wasn't handed down until just a couple of minutes after 7 p.m. That is a possibility here as we are now just one minute away from the top of the hour. Um, and again, we have no way of knowing exactly what is going on behind us. We can we can. Make assumptions based on previous executions such as Liddell Lee's and some of the other executions that were scheduled to take place last week uh, but were called off at the last minute so we wait and see but you, you mentioned the focus on the drugs the midazolam the vecuronium bromide and the potassium chloride 
and the reactions that these drugs may, I want to emphasize that word, may have on not only Jack Jones but Marcel Williams, uh, they could be very serious. Uh, we, we can re call a botched execution that took place in Oklahoma. Clayton Lockett, he was scheduled to be executed uh, back in, uh, several years ago, and um, because they could not find a, an appropriate vein to inject the drugs, uh, it turned into a botched execution that lasted 43 minutes. And that's just one of many examples involving this three-drug cocktail that the state of Arkansas has decided to use for the very first time in its history. So. Obviously, we are waiting to see uh, how this procedure will play out with Jack Jones and then potentially again with Marcel Williams. And here we are literally at the top of the hour and still uh, my phone is not lighting up with any uh, tweets or text messages saying that this has been halted or stayed. But uh, we will have to wait and see. As you well know, Donna, having been out here uh, earlier, uh, we're in a holding pattern right now. You know, um, getting back to that botched execution you were talking about, I remember when I was out there on Thursday talking with someone from the Associated Press, part of the problem in that case was that the IV was connected to a vein in the leg, and then they had a sheet over that person, and no one could actually see that that IV had actually come out, which is quite interesting um, in, in terms of the drug and its effectiveness and that sort of thing. I know all of this has been argued over and over again. It's 7.02 now. This execution of Jack Jones scheduled to take place at 7 p.m. This is the point where the information is literally cut off. We, as the media, we have no idea whether the execution is happening now, whether it's prepared to happen, or whether it has just happened. Um, this is where we start relying on our reporters and them feeding information to us. I've been waiting to hear from Mitch McCoy because he took a picture of Solomon Graves who's sitting by the phone waiting for that phone call so that he can alert the media and say that the execution has happened, the execution has been called off, there's been a stay of execution, whatever the case may be. That is the picture right there that I've been looking at and waiting for that picture to change. That is Solomon Graves. He is in the media room at the Cummins unit. He is sitting by a phone and once the execution is over, if it indeed happens, he will get a phone call. He will make the announcement to the media that's in the room as we speak. So this is what we're waiting for. We're waiting to hear. Um, we want to show you a little bit about what's going on here in, in Little Rock outside the governor's mansion. There's a protest going on. These protesters, I have a feeling for the remaining executions, they will be there. There's one more execution scheduled for tonight and another execution that is scheduled for this Thursday. Um, these folks do not believe that anyone should die for a crime. An eye for an eye is not how they see it. They are trying to have their voices heard. They want the governor to listen to them and to stop these executions. In their minds, it should not happen. As you can see, they're standing right there in front of the governor's gate. That is the entrance into the governor's mansion. Earlier, we heard them praying. We heard them singing. Um, and very sad for them on Thursday after Liddell Lee was put to death, we saw them crying and hugging one another because for them this is very, very painful. Some of them know death row inmates, some of them don't. Some of them just have a passion and they just want our Kansans and the rest of the world to know that execution is not the way that these things should go. And that is why they're there. In fact, that crowd looked a little bigger than the one that I saw on Thursday, just in terms of, uh, of, of what I was able to assess right there. I'm going to show you once again Solomon Graves. This is the man that we're waiting for. He is the spokesperson for the uh, Department of Correction, the Arkansas Department of Correction. Uh, this picture is far away from me right now. Let me see if I can pull it up on my phone. It's far away, but it almost looks to me. I can't tell if he's on the phone or if he has his hands in his head. Can someone tell me he has his head down? Okay, that's, that's what I was trying to figure out. The, my monitor is a little too far away from me to really think someone's bringing it in closer to me. Yes, he's there with his head down. Um, I am sure this has been a long day for him as well as 
all the other workers at the Arkansas Department of Correction, the people who have to deal with this. You know, for a long time they were talking about um, that this could be a very tough thing for the people who have to administer the drugs, the people who have to watch inmates die. It can be, and, and some of them, you know, make friends with these inmates. I know they're death row inmates. They committed horrible crimes, but sometimes um, jailers, sometimes prison guards, they do make friends at least when they're all together. So, you know, for some of them, this can be very, very, very difficult for them. And I can only imagine um, how tough it must be for Solomon Graves as we watch him there. He could just be tired. But anyway, I want to go back to my co-anchor, Kevin Kelly, who's at the Cummins unit. He's standing outside. Kevin, I know what you're going through. I was there on Thursday. You're waiting for information. I know I'm tossing it back to you, hoping that you can tell me something new. Is there anything new? Uh, not from an official capacity, but um, it w what is interesting is the silence. Uh, Jack Jones was scheduled to be executed at 7 p.m. Um, and as you know, Donna, having monitored uh, Twitter as we speak, which is really the, the best resource we have at this point to monitor what is going on behind us as Mitch McCoy is inside uh, waiting an official word from the Arkansas Department of Correction, um, right now nothing's happening. If, in fact, the execution has begun, we are now, give or take, in what's called the consciousness test uh, window, if you will. Um, again, this is all if, in fact, the execution is underway. The midazolam has been administered uh, at this point in the process. I'm not saying it has for, for Jack Jones, but if, in fact, it has, then the deputy director and the executioner will begin what's called a consciousness test. And as we learned from last week's execution with Liddell Lee, that consists of the executioner or the deputy director walking up to the inmate, flicking his uh, eyelashes, the inmate's eyelashes, to see if there is any response. Also pinching the individual to see if there is any other reaction. And once it is determined that the inmate is in fact unconscious, then the next procedure will take place, which is the vecuronium bromide, which is a paralytic, and that will be followed by potassium chloride. Um, but the silence is, is interesting, because um, usually leading up to it, as, as you know, Donna, the, the Twitter was lighting up with updates uh, from Mitch McCoy, from Jesse Tenure, from Marcy Manley, and here we are eight minutes after the top of the hour, and I have not yet received any uh, tweet or official uh, word as it pertains to the execution of Jack Jones. Wait, here's one right now. Let's see if this is uh, this is from Marcy Manley. I'm not sure if it uh, so is Kevin. likely underway now in Arkansas, given that no stay was issued. So uh, we will uh, we will wait for the official word from the Arkansas Department of Correction or some other government official. Uh, as to where we stand, but that's okay. the latest from here, Don. All right, Kevin. All right. You know, you mentioned Marcy Manley. She's sitting right here next to me, and I, I'm going to talk with you a little bit, Marcy. <laughs> you, just like the rest of us, you have very little information right now. That's because they're just, it's silence not only out there at Cummins Unit, but also um, here on, on the docket. We haven't heard word of Marcel Williams and his um, pending legal challenges that sit at the U.S. Supreme Court right now and also in front of the Arkansas Supreme Court. And um, we certainly haven't seen, we know that we didn't see a stay come down from the U.S. Supreme Court. And mm -hmm. I don't think that it was necessarily anticipated that we would um, because we had seen the court um, be reluctant to intervene or step in where the state or the Eighth Circuit had not. But wait, let me just ask you this, though. In terms of Marcel Williams, the U.S. Supreme Court will say something. Oh, yes, they will issue okay, something. Okay, they will say something. I'm just saying that in, in the case of Jack Jones, we he didn't have a, a stay already in place. Gotcha. With Don Davis, his stay was already in place with by the Arkansas Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court didn't step in to undo what the lower court had done. And in Liddell Lee's case, also didn't step in to do something that the lower courts hadn't done. And so um, had they issued a stay of execution for Jack Jones, that would have broken with mm -hmm. um, and taken a different trajectory than they had in the other cases by, you know, taking a step that, that the lower courts had refused to take. Is that typical, the U.S. Supreme Court? Typically, I mean, unless something in, in I guess, the justices' minds is just unjust, 
typically they don't overturn a, a state court in, in a case like this, they don't overturn that decision. Or a lower court that has um, the record in front of them, they've had days to consider, well, um, days, in some cases days, but mm -hmm. much longer than perhaps the Supreme Court justices have. Um, it's a tall task to ask the Supreme Court to intervene. Um, a writ of certiorari certainly is a rare circumstance. A writ it's, of certiorari, I'm going to have you explain that. That, I mean, it's very basically, it's asking the Supreme Court to say, take this as a case, we want the the lower courts to have to send up all of its information so that we can look at it, we can review it, and possibly intervene. Okay. Um, and so, but those are, are rare instances where those things are are given. Um, you know, we hear all the time about um, uh, petitions for writ of certiorari being sent up to the U.S. Supreme Court not dealing with death penalty cases, mm -hmm. and they take anywhere from 70 to 80 cases a year mm -hmm. um, to be considered on these issues. Death penalty cases are a little different because they do have um, these questions of cruel and unusual punishment, constitutional issues, and so that's why this process works so much more quickly because time is literally of the essence as yeah. we sit here and and watch the seconds and minutes right. tick by. I'm going to have you explain once again though uh, Jack Jones what it is why he was um, why he was filing cases against this execution because as I mentioned before he said he didn't want clemency we mm -hmm. know this but there were issues in terms of mitigating um, issues mm -hmm. as well as his health um, uh, his weight, he's obese, mm -hmm. um, and the drug interactions with the drugs that he's already taking, sure. all of these things came into play. Mm -hmm. here in in various different filings too I mean they don't always lump all of these things together and some of that which is why it takes so long sometimes it can and and sometimes the court looks at that and says this is piecemeal litigation and um, and can be seen by some as a delay tactic now I'm not going to go into that I don't know what the purpose is and why they file the way they do but I can say that on the one hand he didn't want clemency he was you mentioned all of the things that he had said in his past, but there is a difference between um, not wanting clemency and not wanting um, to seek out an opportunity to forego the death penalty and wanting to challenge the fact that you believe that it might not kill you and mm. leave you in a vegetative state, leave you worse off health-wise um, than perhaps you went in there if it doesn't kill you. Mm -hmm. And so those were the points that were raised, these Eighth Amendment issues of cruel and unusual punishment, um, the lack of assurance they felt like that um, Jack Jones would have, having been on high-powered medications for quite a while, his, his weight and what the effect of the drug would be. So those were all issues that were argued um, to the federal courts and they were simply rejected by by those entities um, as not having enough evidence to be sure that um, that some sort of cruel and unusual unusual punishment would follow. The other issue is uh, is about the legal process, and um, on the one hand, a, a, an attorney has a responsibility um, to try and um, ferret out what they see as um, injustice in the justice system, and to um, address any oversights that they feel like may have been made. And so, um, Again, I can't speak to the motivations okay. of filing all of these because okay. we don't have those motivations have in the filing. Right. But those could be considerations that you're highlighting this injustice um, that an attorney or Jack Jones might feel is present um, because these cases do serve mm -hmm. as precedent for okay. other cases. Okay. All right. We're going to go back out to the Commons Unit. Hey, uh, Kevin, I just got word that Governor Asa Hutchinson, he's at the state capitol tonight. I know J.R. Davis typically is floating around out there and kind of briefing the media on what, what's going on. Uh, he was uh, at the capitol on Thursday, but he was there because there was an event going on at the mansion. Otherwise, he would have been there. I'm not really sure why he's at the capitol tonight, though. Have not uh, have not seen Jr. here at at the Cummins unit like we have in the past uh, all last week, but. Um uh, if, if he is here, I'm sure he'll, he'll be able to come out at some point in time and make a comment on behalf of the governor. Uh, it is now 7.14, 14 minutes uh, after the top of the hour. Um, so it's an interesting window uh, considering the silence that has, uh, that has taken over the Cummins unit uh, since the scheduled execution of Jack Jones was, was supposed to take place beginning at 7 p.m. Of course, the Arkansas Department of Correction, the staff, the personnel, the individuals involved, 
Uh, they have practiced this for a very long time leading up to the first scheduled execution, which was last week. But of course, the first two were stayed. The third was uh, was also stayed. And then, of course, Liddell Lee was finally executed. Uh, so they've had many rehearsals. Uh, many time uh, opportunities, I should say, to practice uh, th this routine. And here we are once again, and uh, it, is, it is potentially underway. Uh, we are making that assumption because we have not received an official word as of yet from the Arkansas Department of Correction that the lethal injection process uh, has uh, taken place. Um, but we've been focusing a lot on the impact of these drugs. We've also been focusing on the impact that uh, this n number of executions that, uh, that the state has uh, scheduled between now and the end of the month uh, can be a very stressful time, uh, but it's all because of the potential expiration date of midazolam, one of the drugs being used. Um, as I continue to monitor Twitter here, Donna, still no updates. But think about the stress involved. Uh, that played out during the Oklahoma execution of Clayton Lockett. I know I keep going back to that, but a lot of lessons were learned uh, on that night of his execution, which is very similar to the one taking place here tonight. That also was a double execution. Clayton Lockett was the first to be scheduled to be executed, but as I mentioned before, it took 43 minutes. It was a botched execution. After an intense review of the procedures as well as an investigation that was conducted, it was determined that a number of factors were in play that may have contributed to the botched execution. Among them, uh, the speed and the pressure and the stress that the, the individuals who were administering the drugs on Lockett may have felt knowing that uh, it was a, uh, two executions were scheduled for that night. As a result of that investigation, uh, the state of Oklahoma said no more double executions. This will not happen again. We will now schedule executions one week from each other. So, uh, so some lessons learned there as a result of the procedure done with uh, Clayton Lockett. But as you you know, each uh, instance, each execution, uh, things can be learned, things can be changed, and hopefully new protocols can be put in place to make the process a little bit easier. Here in Arkansas, though, as we wait for an official word on Jack Jones, uh, let's see. Group outside waiting for any news. Atmosphere is calm here. That's from Charmaine Nero. Obviously, as you know, Donna, protesters outside the, the governor's mansion. Uh, and we're all waiting for that for that official word to come in. But 18 minutes after the top of the hour, uh, I, I, I could make a number of assumptions, but that would not be the correct thing to do, especially in a situation like this, Donna assumptions here, but you were talking about Clayton Lockett just as a follow up. The last time a successful double execution was carried out in the United States, it was in Texas in 2000. The last time a double execution carried out in the state of Arkansas that was successful was 1999. 1999. So anyway, yeah, you're, you're, you're right about that. Now, um, you mentioned the governor's mansion. We're looking at the, uh, the peaceful protest that's going on right now. They are singing. I see some holding candles, um, obviously singing and praying and hoping, I guess, you know, praying perhaps that this execution doesn't happen, that, uh, that the U.S. Supreme Court comes in at the last minute. I know we said that all of the pending executions uh, had been, or excuse me, all of the pending, um, help me here, all of the pending legal, challenge. legal challenges had been uh, denied, but you never know if another legal challenge will come up. I was told we had a picture of, uh, of Jack Jones's daughter praying. Is that true? There, there it is. There's the picture of Jack Jones's daughter. Obviously, she's surrounded by some other people there as well, maybe friends, maybe family. But um, they were praying tonight, um, his daughter knowing, of course, that her father uh, is scheduled to be executed this evening. It is now 719. The execution was scheduled to happen at 7 o'clock. We have not heard hide nor hair in terms of what's happening, whether the execution has happened, uh, whether they're still waiting, whether they've encountered problems. That was one of the big things that the attorneys were arguing, that there could be problems which could turn this potential execution into a cruel and unusual punishment. 
We don't know if that's what's happening. We don't even know if the curtain has actually opened for the witnesses to, uh, to witness the execution. There's just so many unknowns for us, and, and we're getting used to this because typically this is how it goes. Um, we can't report what we don't know, and we are not in the business of making it up as we go along. So we're still waiting to hear from the uh, Arkansas Department of Correction. As I showed you earlier, a picture of Solomon Graves. He's the PR guy for uh, the Arkansas Department of Correction. He will get the phone call. He will relay that information to the media. There's a media room at Cummins. Obviously, you saw Kevin. Kevin's outside doing his live shot along with other reporters, but there are also reporters inside of the media room, and um, we're waiting to hear from them because they will probably get the first word. Sometimes uh, the uh, governor's office could actually send out the information first, or, uh, or uh, the attorney general's office could do that as well, but typically, it's been that we've only had this happen once. We've gotten the information from our reporters, and that's what we're waiting for. I'm going to go back over here to uh, Marcy Manley just to talk a little bit more about this. Um, Liddell Lee's execution, mm -hmm. 11 minutes from the time that the drugs were introduced to the time that the coroner said, pronounced him dead. Mm -hmm. We don't know that that same thing will be the outcome for Jack Jones. We don't know that it would be the outcome if Marcel, if he's actually Williams, mm -hmm. if he's actually put to death tonight. We just don't know. And a lot of that is pending on health issues. It is, and, and just being able to find a vein um, can be a part of the process. There, there are a lot of things that go into this. I, I recall on Thursday, um, and it was a much later decision um, by, by the courts and, um, and, and speculating whether, you know, it was at that point 1145, 1133 is when we got notice of, of the Supreme Court's decision to deny um, the stay of execution. And, um, and sitting and, and watching the clock and wondering at what point um, were things in the process. You guys were doing the same thing. You were live mm -hmm. um, out at Cummins like Kevin is now. And um, this is a very insulated process once it gets to the point that it is actually occurring. And yeah. so information coming from in there to the outside is really limited. We've monitored and, and watched for everything you can out here and then it gets to the point where all of the information is coming from the inside. And we're still waiting for a decision on Marcel Williams' um, cases. He currently has legal challenges pending at um, the United States Supreme Court so far. We haven't received notice of that. He also has another motion that he had filed asking again for a stay of execution from the Arkansas Supreme Court. And um, I can promise you I'm refreshing that docket I, I every see, once in a while. I, I see you doing that. And there's there's just nothing. It is right. it is really silence out there aside from those um, those protesters or um, people coming together and lighting those candles outside the governor's mansion. Mm -hmm. And then I, that's one thing I thought it was interesting that we had that picture um, of Jack Jones's daughter because certainly um, it would be difficult to forget the victim's family because they have lived with that absence and that horror for so many years. Mm -hmm. In some of these cases, um, they have thought that execution was coming, but also you have... Okay, here we have it. Jack Jones, who raped and murdered a bald knob mom and beat her daughter nearly to death, has been executed. Time of death, 720. Time of death, 720. Kevin Kelly, I know you're there right now. Mm -hmm. You're seeing this tweet that we just got from uh, Jesse Tenure. It is done. It is over. Kevin? Yeah, it... <coughs> Donna, it's official. Jack Jones, a condemned inmate who's been on death row for more than 20 years, has been executed. This according to Jesse Tenure, who just sent out a tweet saying, quote, Jack Jones, who raped and murdered a bald knob mom and beat her daughter nearly to death, has been executed. The time of death, 720. Uh, 720. It is official. Jack Jones has become the second death row inmate in the state of Arkansas to be executed since 2005. So that is official, and now we are roughly 35 minutes, 40 minutes away from the next scheduled execution of Marcel Williams. Um, and I'm continuing to read more tweets from Jesse Tenure. Jones's final words were fairly lengthy. 
copy being sent from the death chamber to the Arkansas Department of Corrections spokesperson. Uh, at this point in time, now that it is official, Jones's body will be uh, carefully removed from the execution chamber, placed in a hearse, and then taken off the premise uh, here at the correction facility for the very last time. Uh, and then we will regroup, refocus, and uh, we will have to, first of all, wait for witnesses to come out to describe what they saw to see if this was a smooth execution or if there were complications. Uh, if, in fact, it began at 7 o'clock, which, again, I am not sure of, but uh, it was a 20-minute process from the scheduled time that this execution was supposed to take place until we got the official word from Jesse Tenor just a short time ago. Um, she's now tweeting out that Jones was executed in 14 minutes, 14 minutes. So that indicates, based on Liddell Lee's execution last week, which, Don, as you mentioned, was 11 minutes, that it appears, at least at this point in time, uh, having not heard directly from the witnesses, that this was, in fact, a smooth process. Maybe it got started a little bit later. But Jones was executed in roughly 14 minutes. Uh, we're waiting for the three media representatives who witnessed Jones's execution to come out. Um, we hope to have a live interview with one of them if uh, they are uh, available. But uh, first and foremost, they will have a news conference in the media room behind me. Um, Fox 16's Mitch McCoy uh, now walking out of, of the media room. Uh, Mitch, uh, I, I know you're busy, but it, it's official and it only took 14 minutes. Uh, describe the process of, from your vantage point being inside the media room. Sure. So the phone rang. Solomon Graves was standing by. He's the public information officer for the Arkansas Department of Correction. He announced that at uh, 7.06 they started the process to execute Jack Jones and the coroner ruled his death at 7.20 p.m. What's interesting is there were last words. It was too lengthy. So that is gonna be provided to the media here shortly. Uh, we don't know exactly when. We know that the Arkansas Department of Correction director is drafting that right now, and that's gonna be forwarded to the PIO and then ultimately forwarded to us. We do know that Jack Jones' family's victim is here. Um, and they're going to be providing a statement to the media along with Jones' attorney later we tonight. Don't, we don't expect to hear from them directly other than via statement. It, it's possible that they hold a news conference tonight. They're, that's what's expected at this point okay. from, from both the attorney and Jones uh, Phillips' family. And is it your assumption or have you heard officially from the Arkansas Department of Correction that they're now moving forward with the next execution? They haven't made anything. Uh, they haven't Officially. said anything yeah. like that. We can only assume that right now they are moving forward with the next scheduled execution, which is at 815. But we do know, I mean, looking at the time here, they are running a little bit behind with the execution. So unclear at this point if the execu execution at 815 will start on time or not. All right, Mitch, thank you very much for that update. So again, uh, Donna, uh, obviously a, a, a breaking news story here. It's official. Jack Jones uh, has been executed uh, according to state law and according to the lethal injection process. It took 14 minutes. Uh, the media witnesses uh, have just been brought back to uh, the media room. They will now uh, filter into the media room back there well, where eventually uh, they will be uh, stepped forward in front of a microphone uh, to other media representatives who were not witnesses to Jack Jones's execution, and they will give their account of what they saw, uh, what the mood was like, if it was a smooth process, if there was any reaction from Jack Jones once the first drug was administered or even possibly the second, or if it was like Liddell Lee's execution, which some witness does described as quick and peaceful. Uh, we will await the official word from the witnesses and uh, make that available to you as soon as possible. But again, Jack Jones uh, has been executed, and now the focus is, uh, excuse us, <laughs> a lot of, lot of cords uh, here, Donna, but um, the focus will slowly pivot, I should say, to the next scheduled execution, which is Marcel Williams. And at this point in time, according to Marcy Manley's tweet that I just received, still no word on stay requests pending at the Supreme Court of the United States submitted by Marcel Williams. So at least for that part, uh, that is on hold, but Jack Jones has officially been executed. Donna? All right, Kevin Kelly, thank you for that. Now it's on to Marcel Williams to see what happens. Kevin just said uh, 
that you sent out a tweet saying nothing has happened as of yet. But I want to go back yeah. out to the protesters. I want to see what the protesters are doing and how they're reacting to the news. Certainly they have heard. Um, it doesn't really see like, it doesn't appear to be um, a lot of, uh, of anything going on with them right now other than just discussions among themselves. Like I said before, uh, Thursday night after Liddell, Willie, after Liddell Lee was put to death, uh, there was a lot of emotion, a lot of tears, um, a lot of sorrow, but um, they're waiting. They're probably hoping that the Supreme Court will come back any minute with a stay of execution for Marcel Williams. We don't know that that will happen, and we keep waiting to hear something. I see you're, you, you were almost getting ready to send out a tweet, Marcy. It looked like you were almost getting ready to. Uh, yes, we've got a response from the uh, Attorney so, General okay. on... Um, on Jack Jones execution and um, this evening Lacey Phillips Manor and Darla Phillips Jones have seen justice for the brutal rape and murder of their mother Mary Phillips Mary was performing her job as a bookkeeper in Bald Knob on June 6 1995 when she was strangled to death with a coffee pot cord while her 11 year old daughter Lacey clung to life a few feet away after being choked and beaten the Phillips family has waited for far too long to see justice carried out and I pray they find peace tonight. And what you heard Marcy read right there is also on Twitter. If you are on Twitter at all, you can go there and you can see the Attorney General's uh, comments there as well. We got them up for you again. You just heard Marcy read basically uh, what is in print right there before you. Okay, so we have not heard from the U.S. Supreme Court in terms of Marcel Williams. Uh, it not is, at this point. It is 7.32. His scheduled execution is 8.15. Mm -hmm. We were talking earlier about um, how uh, they stopped doing two executions at a time after... Uh, Sorry. You've got some information. We do. So um, we had mentioned that... Um, Williams had filed another motion with the Arkansas Supreme Court asking for them to reconsider and they are again saying the stay for execution is denied. So Supreme Court once again um, denies Marcel Williams' request so now for what a does stay that of execution. Mean? Does that mean it's over in terms of, uh, of pending cases or are there others? There are still those pending cases up at the um, United States Supreme Court and you can actually, they can appeal this okay. now to okay. the U.S. Supreme Court okay. as well. Okay, gotcha. Let's head out to Charmaine Nero, who's outside the governor's mansion with the protesters. Have you talked to anyone yet? Yes, Donna, I actually did get a chance to talk to one of the speakers here. Uh, first, let me start off by saying when the group here had been uh, since 7 o'clock uh, in a circle, sort of lighting candles, praying um, for Jack Jones. And when they did find out, um, someone sort of like last time with Lee whispered um, to the group very silently, and then they had that moment of silence right after. Um, I did get a chance to pull over one of the speakers here who actually said during um, when he was up front that, you know, I could have been in in that place. So we are trying to uh, get him to talk to us as well because he's here because he was, um, as he told me, in one of the inmates' shoes. So he's here um, a lot different from the other um, anti-death penalty supporters here who just, you know, they're praying. Uh, they tell me for the families of the victims, for the families of the inmates, as well as the inmates, as well as the Supreme Court. And they just wanted to let everybody know here that they're here to support all of the people involved, but they're also making their point uh, very clear. So hopefully next time that you guys come to us, we'll have uh, him over here to talk a little bit about why he's here and how this experience has impacted him as someone who could have been on death row. Uh, I'm going to send it back to you. Okay, Charmaine, I, I just uh, just for clarification, he could have been on death row. Was he imprisoned? Mm -hmm. did, did they find out that he was wrongfully imprisoned? What I, I don't understand. Yes, Donna, uh, that's exactly what I was just over there talking to him before I came out. So I've got a little bit of details, but yes, uh, he just told me that he did uh, go to prison and um, now he's out. So I'm going to find out a little more details about that. But I know that when he was speaking, he uh, said that this could have been me. So he's here um, in solidarity with the inmates and uh, told me uh, while I was talking to him over there, that he was actually 14 and 15. So he's one of those, uh, similar to when I talked to Marcel Williams' teacher yesterday, that uh, he was um, in and out of jail as a young uh, teenager. So 
uh, seeing if his story is a little similar, just so we can get a little background into uh, what some of the sub protesters here are here for. Okay. All right. Charmaine Nero. Charmaine, thank you for that. Again, Jack Jones now becomes the second death row inmate to be put to death. He is the second since 2005. Liddell Lee was executed Thursday night up to the wee, almost the wee morning hours, up mm -hmm. until the deadline almost. Um, his execution was at 11.56. The deadline for his execution was midnight. This execution happened closer to the scheduled time. The scheduled time was 7 o'clock. It happened, uh, we got the word, um, nine minutes ago. So I think it was roughly uh, 7.23. The actual execution um, from time of the injected drugs up until the time of him being pronounced dead, uh, Jack Jones, that is, 14 minutes. Um, a lot of people were concerned that uh, it might have taken longer or that he uh, may have had some long-lasting effects. This could have been cruel and unusual. We have not heard from witnesses yet, and of course, that's, that's what we're waiting for. As we speak, there's mm -hmm. a media conference going on. The media is being briefed. Once that happens, they can head outside to where Kevin Kelly is, and we can start getting a description or a better understanding of what happened during this execution. That may be happening right now. Kevin, what do you know? Uh, <clears throat> we're just getting us uh, uh, very little information in reference to uh, Jack Jones's last words. This coming from uh, uh, Jesse Tenure, who has just sent out a tweet saying, and I'm quoting Jack Jones here prior to his execution when he was asked if he had any last words. Jones saying, well, I just want to let the James's family and Lacey know how sorry I am. I can't believe I did something to her, of course. Uh, and we've also just... Uh, uh, if, if JR, uh, he is the communications director for the governor, kind enough to join us now. Um, one down. Uh, quite a night. Uh, yes, I think tonight we've obviously uh, stayed on schedule. The rulings from the courts came in uh, earlier than what we've seen the previous two nights. Uh, obviously, again, echoing um, last week, just a, a somber uh, time here in Arkansas tonight uh, with the execution of Jack Jones. It's justice finally served for uh, the family of Mary Phillips and her uh, daughter Lacey, who was 11 at the time uh, when uh, he killed her mother and thought he killed her. And so the justice is served tonight, and, and I think that speaks uh, volumes to the judicial system uh, and for carrying that out tonight. What was the governor's uh, immediate reaction to this? I, I know you kind of echoed it in terms of justice has been served, but have you had been in direct contact with a man, and how is he reacting to the first of two scheduled executions tonight? I have been in contact with the governor. Um, he is, again, confident in the ADC staff. Uh, they've shown um, confidence and, and uh, competency doing this in a very uh, stressful environment. Um, and so he's proud of the staff, uh, and he knows more than anything his heart's with the family tonight because uh, this has been a long time coming, 1995. Uh, so, again, just with, with the family tonight and, and thoughts with them. He's also expressed in the past that, you know, there's been a lot of attention with eight executions tentatively scheduled, uh, and now we've executed two with the potential of three more uh, or two more. Um, that is not an easy process and not difficult to do. Well, it's part of the process. You know, you have to set the executions um, to continue uh, the justice uh, moving forward. If you don't set them, they don't move forward. Um, and so. Uh, that's what this process has been about, and tonight was uh, another um, opportunity for uh, justice, and that's what was carried out. So. The next step, real quick, Marcel Williams. Uh, how do you envision that? Uh, where will the governor be, and, and do we expect another, hopefully, uh, peaceful, smooth process? Uh, we hope for justice uh, for the victims, um, families. Uh, obviously, tonight the governor is at the Capitol, uh, and we'll, we'll wait to comment further until then. But, but at this point, my understanding is it's still uh, scheduled for um, the uh, uh, time that was slated for. So, JR, thank you so much. I you appreciate much. your time. JR Davis, the communications director for the governor. Um, and as I go back to monitoring additional uh, tweets, um, I want to go back to what Jesse Tenor, uh, who has uh, been tweeting about the, the last words that were issued by Jack Jones prior to him being uh, executed. Um, he continued to say that uh, I tried to be respectful from the time I took and became a better person. I hope I did better. I hope over time you can learn who I really am 
and I am not a monster. I am so sorry, Lacey. Try to understand. I love you like my child. Um, and then in terms of what the media witness is, whether this was a smooth uh, and seamless process, uh, Jesse uh, tweeting out that according to the witnesses that were speaking, nothing uh, could detect that Jones suffered. So it appears at this point to have been a peaceful process. But a lot of developments here in the last couple of minutes in terms of us finally hearing what the last words are from Jack Jones and, of course, hearing directly from uh, the director of communications, uh, Governor Asa Hutchinson, saying that justice has been played out um, and it's been a long time coming. So now we uh, will move forward. Uh, with the tentatively scheduled execution of Marcel Williams. Donna? All right. And, uh, you know, I'm also following, following along with Jesse Tenner's tweets. Another media witness says after Jones gave his last words, moved lips for a little, but couldn't hear mm -hmm. if he was saying or what he was saying, if he was saying anything. Um, obviously, Jesse Tenure, who's in the media room during the press conference right now, is getting information. And this is what I was explaining before. This is when we start getting information. And pretty soon, Jesse will come outside, as well as other media witnesses and other people, to also give us more information. Another media witness, and maybe the same media witness, while giving last words, Jones was looking straight up, restrained head, restraint held his head in place. So it looks as it sounds as though he was looking directly at the witnesses when he was uh, making his last words. We're told the last words were lengthy. So that's why we're kind of getting them piecemeal here. He had a lot to say. One of the things he did was apologize to Lacey. She at the time was the 11 year old daughter of Mary Phillips, who he thought he left for dead. But Lacey lived. She is an adult now. She is married. And one of the things she said during, uh, during a clemency hearing was that she did not want to see him live another day. Jones's last word, well, I just want to let James' family and Lacey know how sorry I am. I can't believe I did something to her. Let's go out to Charmaine Nero. She is at the governor's mansion. She finally got that person we were talking about who said, this could have been me, right? That's exactly right, Donna. Now, I am standing with Jihad Muhammad, and he, his story was very interesting because when he was up there, he was saying, this could have been me. So, of course, I had to uh, track you down and just explain, you know, explain to us what that means and how one of these inmates could have been you. Well, I caught a murder charge when I was 14 and was sentenced to 35 years in Arkansas Department of Correction at 15 years old. Mm -hmm. That time I went to prison and I was uh, in touch with and were mentored by guys who were doing a life sentence. And many people throughout the state of Arkansas said that these guys should have been put to death. But because of them and because of their mentorship, I'm able to stand before you and do what I do today. Try to redeem, try to reform, try to restore those who don't have any hope. So I am of those who are of the opinion that uh, the death penalty in, in this state or any state for that matter is not just that these men have the opportunity to redeem themselves. That if they committed a crime 5, 10 or 15 years or 20 years ago, these are not the same individuals who committed that crime. We're all changing and we all can do better and we must be willing to, to take the high moral road. Not seek revenge. Vengeance is the Lord. But let's give our people the opportunity to redeem themselves. That they were given life sentences I believe that they can make a contribution to people like me who are coming to prison. And I know I was talking to you earlier uh, today how I did speak to uh, Marcel, Lewis, uh, Marcel Williams' teacher uh, who was at the last uh, execution here for, um, for Lee. And she was saying that at a young age he was very troubled as a teacher. She was able to see that he didn't have the guidance, so she says, and he um, resorted to crime instead of going down the right path. You said that you, you know, were a similar situation. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I tell you this, my father was killed when I was a young child in the third grade, and at, at that time, uh, me and all of my brothers got involved in gang stealing, lying, cheating, stealing. Uh, the whole nine yards, the family just went haywire. There was nobody there to reach to us 
and to guide us. When I go into the juvenile facilities, I'm seeing the same thing. I'm seeing young people who are hurt. I'm seeing young people who don't have any direction. I'm seeing young people who don't have any uh, family structure, who have no fathers in their lives. And these young people, if we don't stop the killing, if we don't reach in and try to help them, they'll be on death row. They will wind up being on death row simply because we who say that we know better, we who advocate for the death penalty, we're not out there trying to help these people. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. I mean, we could, we could talk about killing, 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 but we're not sending the right message out when we kill somebody. I'm here to say that as a person who has taken a life, mm -hmm. that to take a life is not the right message that you want to see in. And the state of Arkansas should be setting an example. Well, thank you so much for your time and agreeing to come and talk to us. I wanted to make sure I spoke to you. So we're going to continue uh, giving you coverage out here. Right now, I'm looking behind me, and a lot of the um, people in the crowds out here are still um, standing in a circle, trying to gathering, uh, waiting for any news or waiting for, I guess, that prayer circle that they will be getting into uh, once Will, uh, Williams is um, set to be executed. So we'll keep you posted. I'll be out here for the remainder of the night and going to send it back to you, Donna, in the studio. Okay. All right. Thank you, Charmaine. And it was very interesting hearing his perspective. Just for clarification purposes, I need to clear something up. Uh, one of the media witnesses said while giving last words, Jones was looking straight up. Restraint held his head in place. I said he was looking directly at the witnesses. I was wrong about that. He was looking straight up because of the restraints holding his head. Um, one of the other media witnesses, Jones's chest moved for a short period of time. No other movement. And about 25 people in the room with them, silent from his first words until his death. Kevin. Quite a night here at the Cummins unit, Donna. The first of two scheduled executions has taken place. It is official. Jack Jones was declared dead at around uh, shortly after 7 o'clock. The process from start to finish lasting 14 minutes. Um, and from all the media accounts and witnesses, it appeared to be a peaceful uh, and smooth process. I want to bring in uh, Fox 16, Stephanie Sharp, who's also been following this. And we've been monitoring Twitter like there is no tomorrow because that has been our primary source of information. The execution went flawlessly, according to the media witnesses. And I would imagine for the victims' families, uh, some closure and some peace. Yeah, you know, they've been waiting for two decades for uh, for this day. Um, and actually, uh, Je Jesse Tenor, she just tweeted just moments ago that she's getting ready to leave. Um, I believe in that van right there, you should be able to see her walking out here shortly. She's getting ready um, to head to the execution uh, or the death chamber to watch that second execution. So we might see her here in just a bit. Um, but talking back to those families, um, uh, Jack Jones, he did mention uh, Lacey Phillips in his, uh, his final statements that that's what um, uh, Jesse tweeted out earlier. You know, they've been waiting for several years, uh, two decades for this day. We were told that Lacey was here um, on prison grounds. We were told that she did not watch that execution. This is coming from another uh, uh, a newspaper reporter in Searcy that knows her well. Um, that's what they were telling us earlier. Um, but she was here on the ground to um, just to be here uh, for this day. Um, you know, he was originally supposed to be executed uh, in 1996. And just through the legal system, it's pushed it this far. But of course, um, that family, um, you know, it, hoping to find closure tonight. I know that's uh, one of the things that the governor uh, spokesperson was talking about earlier. But uh, to take a look about um, about what happened in in that case, um, Jesse Tenor, she also did a report earlier just to give a little bit more insight um, to to that case in Bald Knob years ago. Knowing that he's alive. On June 6, 1995, Lacey Phillips, then only 11 years old, was with her mom Mary at her accounting office in Bald Knob when Jack Jones robbed them, raped and murdered Mary, and beat Lacey, leaving her for dead. It's ridiculous that we have had to live our whole life like this. During the past two decades on death row, Jones riddled with a series of medical issues, including diabetes that caused him to lose one of his legs. He and his attorney argue all of the medication he's on could render one of the lethal injection drugs useless. No two that I have suffered at times tremendously. I have been in pain since day one, and subconsciously I'm told, I have continually sabotaged my healing out of guilt. 
feeling that I am not deserving. Jones's attorney reading a letter from him after he waived his most recent clemency hearing. His words making it clear he's never wanted clemency or deserve forgiveness. Your wish is and always has been that I die uh, and I could never ever deny you this. An end Lacey has waited more than two decades for. I heard an uh, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and I think, I think it's time. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Foss, and we just got word last few minutes or so the United States Supreme Court has denied any kind of a stay of execution for uh, Marcel Williams. His execution is set to take place in uh, just about, well, about 8.15, so about 20 minutes or so from now. Uh, Kerry Kifford's Ashley Katz is at the uh, Cummins unit down in Grady, and uh, Ashley, we know that the uh, media witnesses have been moved. One of them, uh, Jesse Tenor. That's right. She just hopped on the van and headed over to the death chamber. I was trying to do some math, and it appeared that there was about a 35-minute time span from when the media witnesses left and when we heard that Jack Jones had died. So that's something to keep in mind. It is 7.50. That van just left um, just a moment ago, really, just behind us. Uh, Stephanie Sharp is with me. We're, we're watching now because what we haven't heard, we've heard about Jack Jones. We've heard his last words. They were lengthy, but now we're just waiting to hear from some of the witnesses, the media witnesses who were in the room uh, when he was re received lethal injection. Uh, what, 30 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we do know that they uh, spoke to the media just shortly ago, and um, one of the media witness witnesses, um, uh, uh, one of the TV reporters, he's actually here. Um, we're just waiting on the other witnesses to um, come out. That's actually another witness um, right there. She's with the uh, Daily Citizen newspaper uh, in Searcy. Um, so she is just coming out, and we're expecting one more uh, media witness from the AP. So to get a little bit more of a sense on what happened in that death chamber um, whenever Jack Jones um, was executed, you know, the family has been waiting a long time for this. Um, but what we can say within the last couple of minutes, we did see Jesse Turner, um, you know, leaving in the media van, um, you know, her and, you know, th two other media reporters. So um, they're at this point in time going to the death chamber, um, and we should hear more coming up on that here shortly. That's right, because the schedule um, is 8.15. That was the time that um, he, he is scheduled to die by lethal injection. But of course, um, this is the first time the state has done a double execution since 1999. So of course, things um, they have to monitor and adjust. And that's something that um, is to be expected. It, you know, they may not run on schedule. At this point, we have not seen Joan's body uh, leave the the Cummins unit at this point. That's something that we are um, expecting to see here shortly. Um, last time this happened, we were watching um, Thursday night, Liddell Lee's body. He left, uh, it was departed about 10 minutes after his time of death. So it was pretty swift, Bob. So that's something that we're keeping an eye on right now. And of course, um, Stephanie, if you need to keep an eye on some of those witnesses, I'll let you step off. She's going to try and um, grab some people as they walk out so we can um, hear firsthand exactly what happened inside um, the witness room tonight. And Bob, of course, we will be here throughout the night. This is a, a case that you have a, a lot of history with. Um, when we talk about Marcel Williams and um, the murder and the rape, uh, the brutal beating and strangulation of Stacy Erickson. Bob, you were uh, there covering her disappearance for um, a couple of weeks up until her body was found. Yeah I, yeah, I guess you could say I was familiar with uh, Marcel Williams' crimes before I was uh, familiar with Marcel Williams. And kind of recap what happened, Ashley, was that uh, around 6.45, um, this happened in, um, I would say, uh, November of 19, uh, 1994. Stacey Ray Erickson was on her way to work. She had just dropped her kids off um, at the babysitter's house for the day. She stopped at a gas station in Jacksonville to get some gas. Um, as she was getting back in her car, as she got into her car, uh, someone got on the passenger side. That person was Marcel Williams, had a gun, told him to move over. And, um, and then he drove around to a number of um, ATMs uh, throughout the Jacksonville, North Little Rock area, having her withdraw um, several hundred dollars. And then some, at some point um, throughout the, the day or the day that followed, a uh, timeline I can't recall, um, but he did rape and, and murder her in a storage area. Uh, the search went on 
for, for a couple of days, for several days, everyone was looking for as frantically as possible when information slowly started coming in that they had arrested a suspect uh, and then things began to unfold at that point and then we all became familiar with Marcel Williams and we are all familiar with him today because Marcel, he is uh, at least getting prepped to be brought into the, the death chamber tonight. And he would mark the um, first double execution mm -hmm. that Arkansas has carried out since 1999. We just got word um, just minutes ago that the Supreme Court of the United States um, had declined to issue a stay of execution or um, uh, submit his writ for uh, certiary, consider that. So he, they denied both requests. At this point, he does have, so there are no pending stay requests mm -hmm. outstanding. He did have that renewed motion for consideration of stay of execution to the Arkansas Supreme Court denied um, just a little while ago. That could be appealed. Um, to the United States Supreme Court. I don't know how successfully um, that would be carried out. And I don't know in the timing, in the sense of timing, it's, it's pretty close to the wire at this point. Uh, this time around, um, unlike the previous execution, the, the court proceedings seem to move a lot quicker. Well, and that's one thing that um, a number of the court proceedings had been carried out already. These inmates were also parties to some of those other challenges mm -hmm. for the midazolam, the protocols, and all of those challenges. And so at this point, what the court had to consider were really their concerns with their health conditions that they raised, and then those legal problems and access to justice issues. And so those were really narrowly focused and narrowly tailored, both mm -hmm. to Marcel Williams health and Jack issues Jones. Health very much in focus this evening. Ashley, I think mm -hmm. she's got a witness with her right now. And that was something that everybody was trying to keep an eye on, Ashley, on whether or not there would be any kind of yeah. ill effects because of the, the health conditions and also uh, the physical condition that these inmates are in tonight. Ashley. Hi, Bob. That's right. I'm here with Tracy Whitaker. She was one of the witnesses in the room when Jack Jones received the lethal injection tonight. Um, Tracy, I know that you've had a few minutes to process this. Um, tell us about what it was like once the doors locked and you were able to sit down in the front row and the curtains open. Okay, well, we were actually, the media was in the third row, okay. but I was sitting on the end, so I had a pretty good view. Um, Jack Jones was strapped to a gurney, had a sheet on him from about the neck down. His head was um, kind of clamped, I guess. Um, he spoke for about two minutes. Um, all we could really see was him breathing a little bit, and then, you know, it took him about 14 minutes to pass, and um, he did give a statement that was about two minutes long that was, you know, um, very focused on Lacey, mostly. Did it make sense? Did he seem coherent at the time when it, or confused at all? Um, because it, uh, it seemed that he hit a, hit a lot of different points in those two minutes. Yeah, yeah, it, it was coherent. He repeated several things, but it was it was pretty coherent. And there has been some arguments because of his medical medical conditions that um, the chemicals might not work on him as they did um, someone, an otherwise healthy inmate. Did, did you see any problems? Not at all. Nope. No contraindications. Wow. And you've covered this case um, probably for a while. Um, what can you tell me about the family? Um, you've probably had some t been in touch with them and how it's, it's affected your community. What, what does this mean to them tonight? Um, well, uh, Lacey had told me before that she wasn't really interested in watching the execution, although I know her dad was watching it. And she's the one I've talked to the most. And, you know, this was going to give her what she said was a bit of relief. And a lot of her family members will, you know, have some closure. I don't think it's going to be closure for her, but at least she doesn't have to come back every certain number of years to give a victim impact statement in front of the parole board and kind of relive it over and over. It's just, it's, it's a good thing that it's done for her. And this probably wasn't their first time here because they have come to these, um, these hearings for many years She's now. come to every single one of them, yes. And she has been a key part um, in all of all of the cases um, in the trial, especially um, without her. Uh, we may not be here tonight. Um, yeah, exactly. Anything else you want to add? Um, because this anything that surprised you, you probably had it in your mind how this might go preparing yourself. Anything you could not prepare yourself for? Um, not really. I mean, I didn't eat all day because I didn't want to throw up. Uh, just kept breathing, you know. Um, we we appreciate your time because we know 
Yeah, we know that it, it does take a toll. And um, we just thank you for your time. Tracy Whitaker again with the Daily Citizen out of White County. We really now I want to find Lacey and give her a big hug. And we know that she's probably re ready for a hug, especially right. after tonight. Thank you so much, Tracy. Uh -huh, thank you. So, Bob, you just heard firsthand um, some raw, some raw moments um, from Tracy as she was in the room. She was the eyes. She were the, she was the ears, really, for all of us. She had a pen and paper in hand, but as you could tell in the back of her mind, was Lacey, uh, Mary's daughter, who endured this crime um, many years ago, but one that. Tonight, it seems like she can finally have a bit of relief. Um, this is probably a small step forward for the for the family. Bob. Yeah, certainly can't uh, can't thank Tracy enough. It is an extremely difficult job that we've seen uh, play out over the last uh, couple of executions, or at least the last two, where a, a member of the media goes in there and takes a look and witnesses something that actually uh, nobody should witness, but it is uh, part of what the media is tasked to do, and we are your eyes and ears. Basically, with situations like this, and there's been so many um, conflicting reports, not conflicting reports, but so much concern about the process itself and the materials used in it that it, naturally it's something that has to be witnessed and uh, has to be put on record. Uh, I want to head out to the governor's mansion. I'm not sure if we've got uh, Charmaine out there now, but there's a large uh, crowd gathering there. Uh, this now, I guess, is now moving into its second phase. A uh, number of folks were standing vigil uh, as we approached, walked up to the execution of Jack Jones. Um, now they are waiting for word about the execution of uh, Marcel Williams. That is expected to take place within the next 15 minutes or so. It's a quiet crowd. You might find someone with an occasional candle or some prayers being offered. Just kind of folks sitting around and letting their stance on the death penalty be known. They certainly know Marcy at this point. There's nothing they can do to stop the process. The process is underway and will play out nothing in the courts to stop this. We were talking a little bit about how uh, this time around a little bit quicker because a number of issues that these two guys were connected to had already been adjudicated, for lack of better terms. Something that was really in play, the, the process mm -hmm. of multiple executions, this many, this short of time, and also the drug midazolam, another mm -hmm. drug was brought into play, and also on trial whether or not the drug companies could say, you know what, we don't want you using our product to end someone's life. These things are also playing out, too. Yeah, there are a lot of sort of extraneous circumstances and discussions that are going on. And I think once we get past um, the executions actually being scheduled, the processes of, of legally carrying them out and mm -hmm. legally challenging them, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are people who are going to ask some questions about how do we secure these drugs? Are there rules in how and whom we get them from? And if a company doesn't want their drugs used in these executions, do they have any sort of recourse? Those are sort of questions that came up and they all sort of factored into this. But whether or not they had any sort of Judge Christine Baker didn't rule on on the question um, from the drug companies in that in that preliminary injunction that she initially gave, and then the Arkansas Supreme Court um, just denied the drug company's ability to file an amicus brief um, when when it came down to that temporary restraining order that Judge Gray um, issued on that second drug. So. Yeah, these are issues that are sort of still floating around, even though these executions are being and, carried out. And we talk about the, the three drug protocol. We have access or the ability to employ a one drug protocol. A, a if, we could, if we could obtain that drug. Right. Oklahoma went around all this and they actually started producing their own drug. And that's something that's been suggested, is that states could um, develop their own laboratories and um, develop these drugs themselves with the chemical compounding and, and those type of things, or hire compounding pharmacies that they could then keep secret mm -hmm. um, to develop their own drugs. Um, at this point, that's not something that Arkansas has done, and I don't know that the way the law reads now, if they would have the authority to do that or if that would be something that would have to take place. Um, because right now we know the director of ADC has the authority to purchase the drugs and secure those drugs through, st through that statute. Um, but I don't know that there's anything in the law right now that would allow the state to run its own pharmacy, if you will, for that purpose. What are we hearing at the point after April, the end of April, executions for all practical purposes will stop in the state of Arkansas because we don't have access to the drugs. This, one of the drugs expires, we can't replace it, or haven't found a 
suitable replacement. We don't have any indication, right, that there has been a suitable replacement found by ADC. Um, midazolam does expire in April, and so these individuals who have been given stays and they have to go back through the clemency um, process, yeah, they're not going to be able to be executed mm -hmm. with the drugs that we currently have on hand as a state. Um, and so then that does become a question. And really, the um, I mean, this is being paid attention to what is going on here in Arkansas all across the world. And partly um, some of that is due to um, the European Union. They have regulations regarding what companies can do and what their drugs can be used for if they're going to operate inside the EU. And so we've seen sort of a global economy also have an impact on the justice system here in America, even so far down as a state's That's decision to execute and, and carry out region. the death penalty, yeah. And so it's, it's a totally um, different way of looking at it that global policies can play a part I think too. We're gonna take a look at Jack Jones' uh, entire tweet at this point. Uh, it was uh, very lengthy, as mentioned. Uh, it took him um, a few minutes to, to read this. And he said, uh, I want people to know, I think we could bring it back up. I want people to know that when I came to prison, I made up my mind that I would be a better person when I left than when I came in. I had no doubt in my mind that I would make every effort to do this. I'd like to think that I've accomplished this. I made every effort to be a good person. I practiced Buddhism and studied physics. I met the right people and did the right things. There are no words that would fully express my remorse for the pain that I caused. And I believe there's some more after this. Uh, he did go on to mention um, Lacey and tell her uh, in his statement that he was sorry about this, that he actually loved her like a child, and was, couldn't believe that he had done something to hurt her. Uh, of course, this was a very violent crime, uh, one murder. Um, Lacey was beaten to near death. In fact, uh, here are some folks that are heading in now for Marcel Williams' execution is next, so I assume that these are either some witnesses or it looks like a, a shift change. There's a lot of ADC uh, personnel mm -hmm. there. Um, Back real quick to the Jack Jones, uh, Lacey had been left for dead and crime scene was actually taking photos of her, thinking it was her body and then she showed signs of life. Uh, she was obviously uh, uh, taken care of and would have, w was the key factor in the trial and the conviction. No telling if down the road they could have uh, linked things up, but that was the... I can only imagine the feelings that a person would have hearing those words come from that individual and I don't know that it would... F I, I would be interested to hear, and I know that we're supposed to hear from um, the family in regard to tonight um, at some point, um, but I don't know if that would provide you a sense of closure uh, and apology, or I, I just I I can't Tracy fathom that. I said it, it's over. Brings an end to it. Right. A period and, to and this I, very long, ongoing sentence. I couldn't sentence. imagine her, yeah. her um, carrying uh, anything else with her that she, that she wouldn't want to. We were talking about lethal injection. I want to take a real quick look at uh, how lethal injection, at least the process, is carried out. According to the state's lethal injection procedure, the executioner will enter the chamber prior to the inmate's scheduled time of execution. They will inspect what's called the injection drug box, ensuring all chemicals are accounted for. The gurney will be positioned so the deputy director and executioner can directly see the inmate's face and IV infusion site. At that point, the condemned inmate will be brought in and strapped down. The IV team, who are licensed and have at least two years' experience, will then insert two IV bags containing normal saline. When the flow is secure and safe, the warden will give the green light. The IV team will first administer two syringes containing 250 milligrams of midazolam, a sedative that is supposed to make the inmate unconscious. If the inmate is not unconscious, backup syringes of midazolam and saline will be given in a secondary infusion site. There will then be a five-minute waiting period, at which point the deputy director will confirm the inmate is in fact unconscious. Once that is determined, the second drug will be administered. Two syringes containing 50 milligrams of vecuronium bromide, a paralytic. Then comes the third and final drug. Two syringes of 120 milliequivalents of potassium chloride will begin to flow, ultimately causing the inmate's heart to stop. Here we are now about seven minutes before Marcel Williams' execution is scheduled to begin, and we find out there is a possibility that he could file or his attorneys could file something with the 
U.S. Supreme Court. That's right. I just wanted to double check and make sure that I was checking in with the Attorney General's office because we did have that that final motion that Marcel Williams made to the Arkansas Supreme Court after it initially denied his request for stay of execution. He renewed that motion um, today. Again, it was denied by the Arkansas Supreme Court, and so that would leave an avenue for him to appeal another case up to um, the United States Supreme Court. But I have heard um, from the Attorney General's office that while he could do that as far as they know and they would be noticed if he had he has not filed um, for that review or that stay of execution um, as he did in the other cases and we are now at six minutes away from his um, scheduled execution start date and Ashley is down at uh, Cummins prison right now Ashley it looks like we are now going to be put on standby this is kind of like where we uh, get ready to go on the dark side of the moon uh, for lack of better terms, where we don't hear a whole lot because although there was a lot going on, we're not privy to it at this point. That's right. We do know, um, at least according to the governor's office, that Marcel Williams, his execution is still scheduled for 8.15 tonight. That's t five minutes from right now at this moment. What also I can tell you is that the family of Mary Phillips, they just went inside the building behind me at the Cummins unit. That is where the media room is. Our Mitch McCoy is inside. We're told by J.R. Davis that the family is speaking right now, um, telling um, their side of the story and so often in all of this um, the victims we don't hear their voice as often as we would like and this is a chance for them to talk about what tonight means for them some 20 years that they have been waiting um, to see justice carried out so that's something that um, is happening right now as we speak also what's happening right now we have the media witnesses they left on the van about 20 minutes ago to head to the death chamber that is when Marcel Williams execution is scheduled to begin uh, we know it's it's a process. It took about 14 minutes um, from start to finish for Jack Jones to be declared dead. Uh, so that's something that we are watching right now. And of course, um, we'll be out here following any developments. But that, that is the latest from right now from here at Cummins, Bob. All right, Ashley, thanks very much. You know, we did, it's one of those things, Marcy, as we were mentioning, it's very busy, but there's not a lot of access to the information going on. I can only imagine the Phillips family. Like we talked about this, there closure, perhaps not in anything like this, but an end. No longer will they have to return for clemency hearings. No longer will they have to sit through uh, documentation where this person has been filed, uh, you know, one stay or would like this or that or the other thing. And we're also talking too about the the final statement, lengthy to say the least. We just had an execution. One person, nothing at all. And then Jack Jones went on for about two minutes and connecting, pointing some of those statements to Lacey, which, which you would think, uh, you know, either she just doesn't listen to it or in one ear out the other. And, and I think that when it comes to people grieving and dealing with trauma and situations like this, we all process it differently. Mm -hmm. And so um, it might have been something that gave her validation that justice was served and he had to sit and um, think about that for a very Here long time. Phillips family uh, talking to the media right now. A real quick uh, picture that's on, on yeah. Twitter. I'll, I'm very interested to hear from them. Like Ashley said, so often we don't get to hear their voices in all of this. No, and you've got to, uh, you have to give them all so much credit too because throughout this, all of the families, when you see these things, as reporters we do a lot, mm -hmm. you give those voices credit for being so strong at these clemency hearings. You get the so, so much credit for being strong on days like this where they're speaking right now. Doesn't mean the folks that don't want to comment or don't have any kind of um, statement are any, any less. It, it just means you've got to give them credit because they are there. They are steadfast in the name of their loved ones mm -hmm. that have been taken with them, that they are going to stand up against this person who has been incarcerated for taking their life all the way up to the end of that person's life. So. And so often I think they do a very... fortitude you rarely see. Right. And it's, it's a focus that I think they bring back to the person that it was about mm -hmm. the crime committed against them. And so often we can, we can focus on these legal proceedings because that is important as well. It is important that we follow those. But this is about someone losing, losing their life 20 years ago and this being the end of a sentence that was imposed by a jury. And it's always... A lengthy process mm -hmm. and you have to give the process credit for being as patient as it is because you can't we, history has proven that people have been incarcerated wrongly sure people have been uh, put to death incorrectly there is outstanding evidence so you have to give the process um, 
its, its room to, to navigate the system. And one might argue, too, that over the years the system has gotten too cluttered, too litigious, and there are too many opportunities and avenues for these people to game the system and just drag out the inevitable, uh, be that as it may. Um, tonight, um, Jack Jones uh, ended his sentence, or the state of Arkansas ended his sentence uh, a short time ago, and now we're waiting about um, one minute um, away from the process of beginning for Marcel Williams, who took the life of Stacey Ray Erickson. Um, interesting in that case, too, that he had admitted while being investigated for a number of other assaults that he had he had kidnapped her, and but said that he dropped her off. And you think, Marcy, if this is resonating with anybody, any kind of characters out there, had he dropped her off, had he just got pushed her out of the car, mm -hmm. let her live her life, and he was arrested, rather than preparing a final statement, he could be preparing a homecoming being released from prison after 20 years for robbing somebody. Uh, so the actions of this person um, or you can litigate them all you want. The actions of this person put this person in the position he is in at this minute. Absolutely, and I think at this point um, the questions become, um, and, and forgive us, but technicalities of, and, and mm -hmm. because human rights are important um, in, in an overall sense, not to say that they didn't do something heinous, that they weren't convicted of something terrible, um, but in the process there are these things that the rights that they're afforded in the process, and this is that being carried out on sort of that, that back end of this to ensure that, um, that once the state is carrying out the judgment that the jury imposed, that it's doing so in a constitutional way that even those on death row have human rights that mm. we as Americans have placed in our founding documents that we won't violate even for the most volatile offenders. Right. Ashley, you were outside. Uh, there was some activity. We just saw the uh, family, um, Phillips family, walk inside the, um, the, the media center there. I guess we're probably waiting on word that the Marcel Williams' execution is underway. I haven't seen anything to indicate otherwise. It's now 8.16. This was scheduled to begin at 8.15. Right. As far as we know, it is still scheduled for 8.15. That was about a minute ago. I'm going to step out so you can take a look. Um, you can see the ADC officials there standing guard because this is the family of Mary Phillips. We just heard from them. Um, we heard that they were there to thank the governor, thank the attorney general for serving ja what they call justice to Jack Jones. Um, they're calling it now a different vibe that's in the air now, um, now that Jones is dead. Um, the family also said they're glad. They're glad it's done. And um, we did learn that some of them were in the witness room watching Jack Jones die by lethal injection tonight. Um, that was about an hour ago. So again, this is still very fresh to them. When you think about it, it took 14 minutes from start to finish um, for Jack Jones to die by lethal injection, yet they have waited all of this time. Um, you can imagine they're still processing what just happened um, tonight and a, a big crowd um, came all the way from White County tonight. We know that her daughter Lacey um, was there tonight and we heard Jack Jones reference her in his in his final words that went on for some two minutes. Um, we will be hearing from Mitch McCoy. He's actually walking out of the building too right now. He was in the room when they were able to speak about what they saw. So. Um, we're going to let him catch his breath. He's walking back over here, but as soon um, as he catches his breath, um, we will check in with him and hear more about uh, what the family of Mary Phillips had to say tonight, watching uh, their mother's killer um, be put to death, a sentence carried out that took 20 years. Bob. Thanks very much. We're just getting word from the Attorney General's office that a temporary stay has been issued for Marcel Williams. Uh, this now we're getting word three minutes after this execution was, was set to begin. Um, this is coming from Judge Christine Baker. Uh, you recall she's the judge. Um, her ruling earlier this week was... Um, she's been very based, involved in these executions. Been, uh, was, it, was it the <clears throat> Midazolam or was it the... She actually denied the preliminary injunction to Marcel Williams earlier this week. That was um, on Friday. She issued that um, ruling, and um, and that was appealed to the um, Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, which was also upheld all the way up to um, the U.S. Supreme Court. And right now, um, 
of all times, my, my internet is not wanting to cooperate with me. Um, the looking for the information the on that The temporary stay is for 20 minutes, um, we understand. So we can see yeah. right there, there's a tweet from Judd Deere. We appreciate Judd getting this information to mm -hmm. us uh, throughout this entire process. So now we are another holding pattern while this gets and this is hashed out. more similar to what we saw um, with the Liddell Lee last um, last Thursday. You know those temporary stays, um, and sometimes it's just for the court to work out a detail. Sometimes it's a substantial um, a substantial stay. So yeah, I'm trying to, I can't find any details on just exactly what the stay is for or based on, other than um, I've got it right here, Bob. I'm pulling up the document. Sorry. The court temporarily stays Marcel Williams' execution until 8.30 p.m. on April 24, 2017, or until further order of this court, whichever is later. Um, and we don't have a reason uh, at this point. This was in relation to um, his same case, making um, the claims that were unsuccessful earlier. So I'm not quite sure hmm. um, what's going on at this point. Um, I'm trying to get this this order out so that everyone else can can read it out there, um, but yeah, it's a it's definitely a surprise. Let me see. I'm trying to. I can't. But we're in a holding pattern now. We are uh, until, until eight thirty. Ten minutes now. Ten minutes from now. Uh, the particulars of why we're here, we, we're not quite. So sure. this is this in response to a motion for a stay. Another motion was filed. Um, so the motion that was filed, 427, uh, unconstitutional execution imminent. I'm sorry, I'm just seeing this, so all of this has no, happened just, fairly quickly. We'll just eavesdrop as you. The state of Arkansas executed Jack Jones at approximately 7.20. Mr. Jones and Mr. Williams share similar medical conditions, including diabetes and neuropathy. Mr. Jones agreed to the placement of a central line that was inserted. This is the filing, by the way, is what I'm reading you. That was inserted by the infirmary hours before his Which, execution. So he had his IV put in before entering mm -hmm. the death chamber. In his neck is what it says. For 45 minutes before placing one, um, the infirmary staff tried unsuccessfully to place a central line in Mr. Jones' neck for 45 minutes before placing one elsewhere on his body. Again, we're not saying that this is factual, but this is what has been filed right. with the court. Um, eyewitness reports of the execution state that after the midazolam was administered, the ADC did not wait five minutes to perform the consciousness check. And during continual consciousness checks and after five minutes had elapsed around 7, 11 or 7, 12, Mr. Jones was moving his lips and gulping for air. Mr. Jones's movements after the midazolam was administered as evidence of continued consciousness. Um, so the contradictory, outcome, though, to what we're hearing from the media witnesses. Well, the media witnesses were not there for the placement of the line on whether it took 45 minutes to right. find but the gasping from, for air. This is the first for. We, we did hear that he was moving his lips still. Some had seen that, but we didn't really have time mm. indications on that from what I saw of the tweets um, that we were dealing with. And so some of this is going to have to be, but this is what the, the stay is based on now, is what happened right. in Jack Jones' execution. We were wondering sort of what had promoted this or prompted this order, and it does seem as though that is Would you say the that this is, this is filed in the fact or the concern that there will be some kind of a medical mishap with Marcel Williams. It does if, sound that way, yes, that they're and comparing. No word, no word if uh, Williams has had um, a prior IV put. Um, put it, doesn't, it does not say that he has at this point. That's why, and I'm sorry, this is a little lengthy. I would assume, though, but this, uh, this came down well. Does it say what time it was filed? Because if it was 8.15 or after, then he would already have. Well, I mean, and you, you consider that this includes, it does not include a time that, that I'm seeing it as being filed, only that it was filed today. But we know that it is including information um, derived from Jack Jones' execution. Um, so it would have had to have been um, something related. Obviously, to and that. filed quickly. 
Um, so we're in a holding pattern. Uh, Marcel Williams' uh, execution was set to begin about 10 minutes ago. It is on hold until the bottom of the hour, which is about six minutes from now. Um, that, of course, discounting another stay or a reason for this stay to be up, upheld. And um, the, the stay from Judge Baker is 8.30 or order of this court, whichever is later. Um, so barring an order... That didn't, leaves the door wide open. Right now, it is. Um, I mean, based on my reading of that, um, if, if anyone believes that I am incorrect, please let me know. But my reading of that is similar to the Supreme Court order that we got for Liddell Lee, right, where it was everyone was yeah. thinking 9.30 um, was the cutoff. And actually, it was or until order until. by this court. So While we're working on this new development, want to uh, take a step back. Uh, family of Mary, uh, Mary Phillips, mm -hmm. I believe, we've got uh, um, her reaction to the death of um, Jack Jones earlier tonight. Let's go ahead and take a listen and see what she has to say as she addressed the media earlier this evening shortly after that execution. was murdered just feet from her. Um, this is earlier this evening. Um, and she laid there, uh, actually when Jack Jones walked in the room. Let's go ahead and, and listen to what she had to say. Just a minute. Um, there's definitely a different mood in the, in the air right now. Um, a little more tension, a little less tension in different ways. Um, I would like to thank the governor and his office and everyone that works with him and for him. I would like to thank the attorney general and her office and everyone that works with her and for her. Um, they have gone beyond, you know, and, and took their time and their life for my family and, and, and our life. And I appreciate that and um, it will never be forgotten what, what um, they have helped to, to do and what they've done is um, help serve justice. They, they took care of, of what was ruled in 96 and they gave our family some justice. So um, thank you and I appreciate everything. Your name, you My name is Lacey Phillips, L-A-C-E-Y-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S. And that's my uh, maiden name. My last name now is Seal, S-E-A-L. Um, I don't want to talk about that. I'm glad it's done. I'm, I'm glad that that part of my life is, um, that chapter is closed. Can you talk about the system that you've experienced when you were at that parole board? You said, our family is not coming back here to the world one more time. Tonight, you're not going to Well, I, I'm, uh, I agree, agree, my dad said the same thing about us not coming back. I'm really not understanding what you're asking me right now, but um, I'm glad my family is together tonight. I, I really don't have anything else I want to say right now. Thank you. Lacey Phillips uh, talking to the crowd. Um, thanking mm -hmm. the governor, um, attorney general's office, thanking the, the state of Arkansas for bringing justice. First thing she said that there's definitely different air in the room, a uh, different feeling there in the room. You can see uh, uh, yeah. this weight has been lifted uh, off her. Uh, Ashley's joining us uh, right now. And Ashley, another thing too, when someone brought up the comment that uh, Jack Jones had made about uh, love you like a child, she certainly seemed to, the reaction that she gave was not surprising, just kind of like, that's not even gonna register. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and you guys are hearing that that sound for the first time, and um, we do know that it, you know it was emotional for for the family of Mary Phillips to get up there and, and talk about um, 
their mother's killer's final moments. But um, again, a bit of relief for them tonight. You know, this isn't their first time here and now hopefully um, their last time ever to the Cummins unit. And Bob, we're following along this latest stay. Uh, right now, we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern again. We've been, been here before. Um, I did reach out to the governor's office. Um, JR told me that he is checking to see if Marcel Williams, who was uh, scheduled to be executed at 815 tonight, um, was ever moved from the death chamber or to the death chamber from the cell right there um, next to it. So trying to get that confirmed because, you know, it's been a while since the media witnesses headed out in a van uh, to the death chamber. So they're in a holding pattern as well right now. And um, interesting what you and Marcy have been trying um, to learn from the latest legal filings that have come down, you know, talking about what some of the witnesses um, were able to see uh, from the room as they were able to watch Jack Jones die tonight. Um, we just heard from uh, I believe it was Trisha Whitaker, uh, Tracy Whitaker, actually, with the um, the paper in White County, and she did talk about seeing uh, Jack Jones' lips moving um, after they had already cut his mic and uh, were beginning the process. So that is something that that she was able to testify about tonight when we spoke with her. Stephanie Sharp was able to do more of an in-depth interview with her. So that's something uh, that we will definitely all be be paying very close attention to here um, in in the next few minutes as we wait to see if uh, this stay is lifted and whether or not Marcel uh, Williams will be executed tonight as the state has planned. Um, Stephanie joins me right now. She was able to talk um, with the reporter that was in the room. Stephanie, what did she say about um, after his final words and, and once they began the process and the consciousness checks, were you able to get any more information? Yeah, you know, her? she was saying that um, what it, it appeared that uh, his lips were move, moving, um, you know, after, and they couldn't hear exactly what he was saying. Um, but other than that, you know, she says that it was just very, uh, very quiet. Um, and it seemed like he was, like, still breathing. But, um, you know, according to her, it didn't seem like anything was off. So at this point in time, um, you know, they're going through all of this uh, this stuff, trying to figure out what exactly happened. Um, but, uh, you know, when we were speaking with her earlier, you know, she didn't say there was there was too much. I mean, you know, this is her first execution right. to witness, so she doesn't have anything to base this off of. Um, you know, but so that's kind of what she said, that, you know, she did notice that his lips were moving um, after, you know, they couldn't hear him anymore after he said his final words. So we are hoping to speak with um, the AP reporter, uh, Andrew DeMillo. Uh, he's inside right now um, trying to get a little bit more information on this day and um, on all of this, like, the legal hurdles now. Um, but hopefully soon he'll make his way out here. And he did uh, promise to speak with us on camera a little bit about, you know, what happened inside, um, inside that death chamber, you know. Uh, right. earlier this evening. Yeah, he has a job to do. Um, so does our Jesse Tenor. She will be, um, at least she's on the list to be one of the media uh, witnesses for Marcel Williams' execution, which was scheduled to start about 15 minutes ago. And she even pointed out to us that this will be something that she would be watching in particular mm -hmm. tonight, the IV placement, also his respiration, the consciousness checks. Um, she She's done a lot of research and been able to talk with um, some of the reporters who have witnessed multiple executions. So she uh, is pretty clear on what to look for mm -hmm. tonight. She is, um, and I know whenever we were uh, covering the executions on Thursday, there was a stay. Uh, the media uh, witnesses ended up going to the, the death chamber, and then when the stay was uh, put in place, they came back before uh, Liddell Lee was executed. So uh, they ended up coming back here to this media area, you know, while they're waiting uh, through all of these different hurdles. However, we haven't seen uh, Jesse and the other media witnesses yet, so it appears as if they still are are at the death chamber. Um, they, they, uh, the execution was supposed to happen just a little over 15 minutes ago. So um, at this point in time, we don't really know exactly what they're doing. They might just be kind of waiting there uh, just to listen or to hear some sort of word, um, you know, exactly what we're doing out here. All right. That's the latest from here at Cummins. Bob will send it back to you and Marcy in the studio. Uh, interesting when you guys are talking about the uh, IV placement. We understand that uh, Marcel Williams did not agree to go um, the route that Jack Jones went. And I, that I've just learned that from the filing, the state, um, it says in here that 
um, at approximately 8.15 p.m. is when the state is set to begin its execution, but he did not agree to the insertion of a central line. Thus, his execution is likely to be, quote, even more torturous than the Jones execution, end quote. Um, again, these are the attorneys for Marcel Williams and what they are filing to the court. I'm not saying that this is factual information or what has happened, but this is what the court is being told and what has um, led to this stay. Um, another point that they, they mention is because Mr. Jones' execution appeared to be torturous and inhumane, Mr. Williams moves for an immediate stay of his execution pending further review of the Jones' execution in this court. And, um, Bob, they're basing that off of um, during continual consciousness checks and after five minutes had elapsed, around 7-11 or 7-12, Mr. Jones was moving his lips and gulping for air. Um, Mr. Jones's movements after the midazolam was administered as evidence of continued consciousness. So that's what the attorneys are basing these arguments on to the court. It's going to be interesting too when they when you mention and this is something in the media we've been watching um, the initial executions we were told the media witnesses would not be allowed to take in recording devices that's mm -hmm. understandable cameras and phones and things like that um, are absolutely forbidden but couldn't have pen and paper and then were later allowed to have pen and paper so you could record what you're seeing naturally then the the mic issue we talked about this when we were out there um, last week and they bring the mic down mm -hmm. well in this kind of hampers a witness's ability to actually witness because now you can no longer hear anything. And so that's going I I can see that being an issue here. Well that it, we kind of thought the mic should be up the entire time so you can see and hear what's happening inside the death chamber itself in the event an inmate is gulping for air or making sounds to the effect that this isn't going the way it's supposed to be planned. Because it would seem difficult for a witness to be able to ascertain that. You see their lips moving, but I could also see um, many of us have seen uh, people who have received medication and they're in and out of it and before mm -hmm. they they're completely unconscious, they're sort of murmuring and, and falling into that twilight zone before yeah. unconsciousness settles in. And so, so it would seem to raise some questions um, as to what was actually going on after that drug was administered. Because, and then, because, and I'm not saying anything, you know, for or against one side, but what, what happens when you shut that mic off, you're, you're excluding another party that could be witness for or against the, the process itself. Independently verifying. Ex exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to some more, um, the, uh, the statements from the Phillips family that they gave us early this evening, just, just after Jack Jones' execution. Absolutely. First, I'd like to thank the people of Arkansas. Um, the people of the entire state have stood behind our family for 20, over 22 years now, starting with our small community in Bald Knob, the people of White County, the citizens of, of, the, of, the, of White County that served as a jury uh, for this very difficult case and listened to some very disturbing testimony and had the courage um, to administer and, and hand down a verdict and a, a sentence which was carried out here today. So thank you. Thank you all. Um, I know my family is proud to be the part of the community that is a, you know, a great state like Arkansas. Um, and I'd definitely like to thank some very special people. As, as a, I remember standing in the, in the, in the hospital um, worried about Lacey and Chris Rapp came into the room and he talked to us and he told us that he would be seeking the death penalty, he would be seeking justice for our family. And he said, and that's not gonna end at when the trial ends. I'll be, I'll be with you to the very end um, till this sentence is carried out. Then as a, a boy, I, I didn't know what that meant, but now standing here as a man, I, I, know, I know what that what he meant. Uh, Chris Raff is, is a man of his word and the people of White County should be should feel very honored to have a man like him serving him, serving them through so many years and I, and I know our family owes him the deepest debt of gratitude. Um, and I would just like to say, you know, today, today was about those, those um, the individuals getting the sentences carried out on them. Uh, but to be honest, I, I'd like to talk about my mother. Uh, she was an amazing woman. And, and I, I never, never dwell on, on how she was taken from me. Um, and I don't feel as if I was wronged by, by having lost her. I feel that I was given a great honor to have, as a mother, one of the greatest, 
greatest women I've ever met uh, for 14 years. I, I was very lucky, and I, and I think every member of my family will agree that uh, we were very lucky to share our time, share time here on earth with her. So that's what I'm thinking about today is my mom. Um, she's not, she, nothing, no events today can bring her back, but, but that's okay. You know, we, we, we honored her memory here today by carrying out justice. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Did you get your name? My name is Jesse James Phillips. Did you guys watch from closed circuit or were you in the room? No, sir. I was, uh, I was standing in the uh, observation room with my father, my grandfather, and my aunt. Thank you. Phillips' son, um, Jesse, there talking to the crowd, uh, thanking Chris Raff. He's the prosecuting attorney in White County who uh, told him early on, very early on, that he'd be seeking the death penalty. I uh, carried it out. Let's go ahead and listen to another said the people of White County help us do it. The little Judsonia, Ballinab area community. And uh, I hope the state of Arkansas and the government and the court system learn from this. It don't take 22 years to get something done. Get it done right. And people don't have to live like this or think about this for 20 something years. That's all I got to say. Thanks. Another family member there um, suggesting that perhaps there was a quicker way to, uh, to justice. Um, back to Mary Phillips' son, Jesse. Even with all this going on, and he wanted to put the person up front who is at the center of this, and that would be his mom, Mary, saying yeah. what an amazing woman she was, how honored he was to have her for a mom for 14 years, uh, really brought it home, putting the reason why we're all here, and I had mentioned this to uh, some folks that we weren't here, we're not here tonight because a life is ending, we're here because a life uh, had been taken, and that, that brings it full circle, and he put as, as much of the the robotics and the, if you want to, you know, say that just the difficult part of an execution that there is, and the, and it is, it's not a pretty situation. No. But he wanted to say, you know what, put all that aside. My mom is the reason we're here. We honor her, and how thankful he was to have her as a, as a mom. That said, we are now waiting for um, justice for another family, the uh, Erickson family. It's now 8:40. Uh, Marcel Williams was set to be put to death 8:15. We were waiting. There was kind of a, a mood that there wasn't anything coming at us down the road, and then I don't think it jumped out from behind a tree. Yeah, I don't and, think and that the attorney general's office foresaw this either. I mean, um, you know, they've been very um, willing to communicate with us about things that they might foresee sure. in the process. So and I think this, this was this could be coming this sudden um, for for a lot of people. And we do um, since we covered Marcel Williams motion. Bob, do you mind if we just um, allow people to hear what it is that the attorney no, general no, is saying no in their response? It's very brief. Um, basically the plaintiff's accounts and Marcel Williams would be the plaintiff here um, of Jones execution is inaccurate both Jones and his lawyer consented to a central line ADC staff um, tried to place a central line in Jones neck but the attempt was unsuccessful plaintiffs claim that ADC then placed the central line elsewhere is false at Jones request ADC placed two IV lines and the execution proceeded with the two IV lines just as plaintiffs execution will proceed the claim that Jones was moving his lips and gulping for air is unsupported by press accounts or the accounts of other witnesses. Um, the drugs were administered to Jones at 7.06 p.m. and he was pronounced dead at 7.20 p.m. There was no constitutional violation in Jones' execution. The claims that Jones' execution appeared to be torturous and inhumane is utterly baseless. So that is the response um, to what uh, Williams has filed. Um, and they go on to accuse um, Williams and his attorney saying plaintiff's motion was clearly prepared in advance of Jones' execution and the point. allegations set forth in that filing in no way aligned with the facts of Jones' execution. This kind of last second filing represents the worst kind of meritless death penalty litigation. Wow. Pretty strong words. Yeah, and I to think, say the least, um, given the situation. Well, and um, certainly if, um, and, and there does seem to be some confusion, or maybe not confusion, but a bit of conflicting um, 
uh, information coming from um, witnesses as to were his lips moving or were they, was he was, saying anything or was he just lilting off? I mean, we don't have definite um, confirmation on that. I mean, based on what we've heard, Bob, if I'm not mistaken, there just seems to be some possibility his lips were moving. Yeah, I'm not gasping for air. I, I, that's, and we go back to the cut mic right. issue, um, whether or not that'll change him, because certainly you would, that would be audible enough to to clarify one way or another whether it was just somebody you know murmuring mm -hmm. or it was somebody trying to grasp for air as they were slipping off or, or fighting off unconsciousness. Uh, we're we're going to have to wait and see, and I think what we'll get is a definitive um, report, perhaps if the medical examiner was there or the physician that was there. Um, then there could be arguments for that one way or the other. So it's going to be, and this coming from the judge, it's going to be interesting to see where the judge allows this to go because as we mentioned that she said until 8.30 or the order of this court. Which could be at any time she orders. Um, and, and I do think I can understand, I think most of us could understand that the state has done um, a lot of legal wrangling, responding to motions, responding um, to allegations that this wasn't going to go well. Mm -hmm. And so if it did go as it should have and the process was, <clears throat> excuse me, followed properly and then you have this filing um, for an, a temporary stay, an emergency stay, alleging things that didn't actually happen, um, then Almost one could understand the strong language. There was, there was a filing ready to go in the event something did obviously happen mm -hmm. in the death chamber with Jack Jones in the event that, wait, something could happen. really happened here, something could happen to my client, file this. And whether or not, and now the question is whether or not anything mm -hmm. actually happened. And it was just filed anyway. Right. And that is what it appears that the Attorney General's office is saying, saying in this yeah. filing. We haven't gotten that, obviously, from um, a spokesperson or anything like that. But simply reading the language, very strong language in this motion, um, it would seem that, not even alluding to it, they are saying this was pre, pre prepared mm -hmm. and simply doesn't and match up with the account of what and, happened. And ready so. to go. Want to head back out to Ashley. I'm Absolutely. not sure, Ashley. The, the media witness, I'm not sure, maybe she'd mention the media witness, did, were they moved into place already? Was Jesse taken over to the death chamber? Um, if so, have, have they come back in, in signaling that perhaps this isn't going to happen yeah. anytime soon? That is an observation that Stephanie and I were actually just talking about. I'm going to bring her in. Um, Bob was asking about the media witnesses. You know, they left at about 7.50. It's almost been an hour since they left. We have not seen them return at this point on the van, so we don't really know where they are at this point and, and what they're being told. Yeah, we really don't know. Um, and like we were speaking about earlier, so on Thursday, whenever there were some stays for uh, the Liddell Lee execution, the media witnesses, they came back here to um, this area um, pretty quickly uh, after it all uh, after you know this the stays and the court rulings kind of came through um, so we haven't really heard anything uh, from the media witnesses so far um, they they just opened up a gate over there but I believe that was for for some um, ADC uh, employees to go through uh, but at this point in time uh, we really don't know what's going on and uh, we don't know where they are we have to assume they're probably over at the death chamber um, uh, if they're in place or if they're still in the van you know just at this point we just we don't know um, where they are. That's right. And also, we don't know whether Jack Jones, we have not heard um, officially from ADC, at least I haven't heard, um, if his body has mm -hmm. left uh, the prison grounds at this point. Um, if we think back to Thursday night, Liddell Lee, his body was was transported off prison grounds within 10 minutes of his time of death. So that was pretty swift. Um, but yeah, the claims that, that you, you all are talking about made by the attorneys for Marcel Williams, very interesting uh, developments here as, as we close in on the nine o'clock hour, because um, this is something it looks like the attorney general's office, like you were saying, Marcy, uh, may, may have, you know, been a, I'm sure nothing surprises them at this point. But again, um, their claims speaking to, to what you know, we really all have questions about right now whether or not this was a pre-prepared filing or not. Yeah, and we are we all are trying to get some more information. We have uh, Mitch McCoy. He's inside the media room right now. Um, he's just sitting there waiting for a, an update from the uh, from the ADC spokesperson. Um, they're just waiting around, trying to figure out what's next. Uh, simply like we are right now. Um, but at this point in time, it's just a waiting game. And you know, we did this waiting game on Thursday. We also did the waiting game last Monday, a week ago. Um, with the other executions. Um, 
so, you know, we have to go back to the death warrant expires at 1159. Um, will it reach that point? Who knows? It's only right. 848, um, but something we're still we just do, waiting. We do have to think about and something that um, ADC is prepared for. They have worked up until the last minute, mm -hmm. um, as we saw on Thursday night. And um, of course, our Jesse Tenor is expected to be in, in the witness room when Marcel, when and if um, his death sentence is carried out tonight. So we will have someone to give us a firsthand account of exactly what happened, what she saw, what she heard, um, all of those things she'll be able to jot down on pen and paper um, and share with us um, whether or not this happens or not tonight. Of course, we'll bring it to you, and as soon as we see her, uh, we'll, of course, get her here on the air so we can learn more about what exactly they're being told on their end. Bob and Marcy. All right, guys, thanks very much. Again, we're sitting here waiting for a word one way or the other uh, on whether or not this Marcel Williams execution mm -hmm. will go through. What's scheduled for 815, uh, temporary stay. Well, not necessarily temporary stay. A stay until 830 was given with the uh, caveat that or until this court decides to close it out from mm -hmm. uh, Judge Christine Baker's court. So we're waiting to see exactly how this is going to move. And the basis of it being that Jack Jones... Um, execution was of the of a torturous I think Marcy was the word a torturous nature that is what uh, Marcel Williams attorneys wrote in that so motion are, for stay those are claims being made right now and um, that's going to be argued we're gonna it's it's being argued right now whether or not that's exactly what happened and that may be the holdup of not seeing because generally you see that hearse carrying the condemned body right out from behind where the uh, reporters are right out that gate. That may be why we have not seen his body moved off prison grounds because medical examiner is giving it um, a look-see to see just exactly what condition it's in. Um, if there's anything any, anything to, to indicate um, a torturous event took place. And, and I do wonder, maybe you know, Bob, but do they actually have medical examiners from Crime Lab on hand to analyze and, and look at these individuals, or is that a process that takes place here in Little Rock after the execution? Well, it could because, I guess, maybe because they're claiming this happened on prison grounds, this is where... We're, we're going to take a look at this. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is from uh, reporter David Lippin, um, who, who was in there. He said, did he suffer much when he died? Question mark. Too bad the woman he killed. Well, I'm not sure if that... So it's the here. response below. I'm back from... Uh, I can't, the, the, that's too far away from me. Um, I'm back from... I can get from... one of the guys to roll the, the uh, prompter up so I can read it. Um, I'm back from witnessing the execution of Jack Jones Jr. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Woman said, uh, "Too bad the woman. daughter had suffered imaginally, So that was a reaction to that. Um. Um, here we are. At, this looks like this is um, outside the. So, according to Mitch McCoy here, governor's mansion. Um, if you want to take a look at that, Bob, um, he's giving us a timeline based on the witness statements um, here. So." 704 Jack Jones started statement. 706 finished statement. Microphone went off. 706 closed eyes, but lips were still moving. That that's going to be a point of contention in this debate. Um, the, uh, until this gets cleared up, and, and it, it seems as if this has to get cleared up, Marcy Jack before. Jones, before we can proceed with this next execution, which is currently on hold. Uh, obviously, something we're going to con continue to follow throughout the evening. We're going to bring you updates on Twitter, uh, here on Facebook, um, on the air, ArkansasMatters.com as well. We're going to continue our coverage throughout the night, keep you updated on just exactly what happens, and of course have a complete wrap-up on KRK4 News at 10 o'clock. Thanks for joining us uh, online. Naturally, again, we'll keep you updated throughout the evening because there is still plenty left to happen.
Arkansas's breaking news leader. Fox 16 News at 9 starts now. Two men, both convicted of killing young mothers more than two decades ago, scheduled for execution on the same night. He needs to pay for it. My family needs it. 22 years ago, Jack Jones raped and murdered Mary Phillips and beat her 11-year-old daughter, Lacey. In 1994, Marcel Williams kidnapped and killed 22-year-old Stacy Ray Erickson. Never knew that cold November morning would change my life and get with others forever. I wish I could take it back, but I can't. Jack Jones. Jack Jones executed tonight and pronounced dead at 7.20. Marcel Williams was scheduled to be executed at 8.15. District Judge Christine Baker issued a temporary stay of execution around that time for 20 minutes. We're still waiting. We have team coverage tonight. Stephanie Sharp and Mitch McCoy covering the death row inmates' cases and talking with victims' families. Jesse Tenure chosen as a witness if the stay is lifted and Marcel Williams is put to death tonight. Marcy Manley is covering the legal issues here in Arkansas and Drew Petromo is covering the Supreme Court's decision from Washington, D.C. Good evening, everyone. I'm Donna Terrell. And I am Kevin Kelly coming to you live from the Cummins unit where Donna just within the last 45 minutes to an hour, a number of developing changes that have had a, a deep impact on the scheduled execution of Marcel Williams. I want to kind of break it down for you. It's been a crazy night of developments. As I've mentioned, Jack Jones was successfully executed at 720. For the most part, it appeared at that point in time that it was a smooth operation that only lasted 14 minutes, the execution itself. At that point in time, the focus turned to Marcel Williams, who was scheduled to be executed at 815. But then out of nowhere, a last minute stay was issued. As you mentioned, a temporary restraining order issued by federal court judge Christine Baker halting the execution, making everything come to a stop at least until 830. But however, that TRO, that stay remains in effect. The reason being Williams lawyers stepping up to the plate and making an argument that is sending shockwaves through the Cummins unit here. According to Williams lawyers, they claim that Jack Jones had agreed to a placement of a central line inserted into his neck and that they tried to insert it into his neck for 45 minutes. They then go on to claim that the Arkansas Department of Corrections staff did not wait five minutes to do what is referred to as a consciousness test. They go on to claim that during that time and even after Jones was moving his lips and gulping for air, in fact, they described Jones's execution as being, quote, torturous and inhumane. Well, as soon as that was made public, of course, the attorney general, Leslie Rutledge's office, quickly chimed in saying that the claims are, quote, utterly baseless, inaccurate, and that the claim that Jones was moving his lips and gulping for air is unsupported by the press. Now, several of the witnesses that we have spoken to that witnessed Jones's execution did not describe it in such that fashion as Williams' attorneys are claiming. A lot of legal ramifications in play as we speak, but as for right now, Marcel Williams, his execution is on hold. So let's try and sort this out, at least from a legal standpoint on where we stand. We turn to Marcy Manley to break this down for us. A, a lot of last minute developments, Marcy. Well, absolutely. I mean, this motion was filed after Jack Jones was successfully executed. And so it took place between 720 and roughly um, 745 or mm -hmm. 8, 815, around that time frame. Um, somewhere in there it was filed. And so um, certainly late, late developments. Um, as I was hearing about the temporary um, stay, I was actually preparing a tweet saying we have no stays in place mm -hmm. and that the AG's office hadn't been notified of any, particularly to the U.S. Supreme Court, um, because Marcel had had the um, request for a stay denied by the Arkansas Supreme Court, that renewed motion that you and I had talked about, right. Donna. And so that is what we were anticipating seeing action on, and then we have this um, renewed filing 
um, in this federal district court case. So at this point, um, the motion to stay has been granted. There's an order temporarily staying Marcel Williams' execution. That time of 8.30 is in there, but that obviously has come and gone. Um, and the important part is, or until further order of this court, um, which is indefinite. And so at this point, we have the motion, we have the order, and we have the response. Um, what we don't have is any word yet on whether Marcel Williams will actually be executed tonight, whether there is an investigation mm -hmm. going on, or how, how one even begins to approach this, um, this question that has been posed to the federal court. And like the, Kevin was saying, the AG's office says, you know, this, this contradicts what the media witnesses saw, but this would have been going on when the curtain was closed and the media witnesses would not have seen this alleged inhumane and torturous act as the attorneys are calling it. Well, there's two parts here, right? That there is the question of the central line um, and Jones agreeing to that and then them unsuccessfully trying to place that, um, whether it was 45 minutes or how long it was, um, we don't know. I don't believe the attorney general's motion directly um, addresses that time complaint, um, but it does say that they were unsuccessful in putting that central line in his neck and therefore they placed the IVs the, the dual IVs um, in just as plaintiff's execution would proceed because mm -hmm. Williams has not agreed to that central line placement. Um, so there's one, that's the one part. And then the other part is once the midazolam was um, implemented in this protocol, um, that they're alleging that he continued to remain on some level conscious to move his lips and gasp for air. The hard part here is, is that media accounts did say that following Jones's statements that lasted about two minutes, his lips continued to move, but the microphone was cut off after his last words. That's true. And if we're alleging, you know, g gasping for air, the witnesses at that point wouldn't have been able to hear anything from within the chamber. So mm -hmm. um, both sides are, are making allegations at this point. One of the strongest statements, um, aside from calling the claims baseless, um, is the AG's sixth point here, where it says Williams' motion was clearly prepared in advance of Jones's execution, and the allegations set forth in that filing in no way align with the facts of Jones' execution. This kind of last-second filing represents the worst kind of meritless death penalty mm. litigation. Wow. So some strong wording here. Real quickly here, and we're going to send it back out to the Commons unit, but if this stay is not lifted, what will the AG, what is she likely to do at this point? Go to the Eighth Circuit or the State Supreme Court? I, um, well, it wouldn't be the State Supreme Court because right now we're in federal jurisdiction. Gotcha. And I don't know, because this isn't a final order, this is a temporary stay, um, it's sort of, it's interesting grounds at this point. We're, we're in interesting territory um, of what will happen here. Um, and I, it's, this has all happened very quickly. We've yeah. been trying to read through the filings and get a good handle on, on what each side is actually alleging. And my next step is to check in with the Attorney General's office and, and everyone involved to see, okay, how does this function? And at some point, does anyone push the federal, the federal district judge's hand okay. tonight? Okay. All right, Marcy, thank you for that. We, of course, will be talking more with you in this hour. We're going to send it back out live to Kevin Kelly. Kevin, obviously, um, this is kind of how it goes in terms of the legal process. One minute you're expecting one thing, the next minute it can change on a dime. And it certainly has in the case of Marcel Williams, as you well know. I, I do want to uh, share with you some of the tweets that are Mitch McCoy, who uh, is in the media room behind me, um, giving us uh, some last minute uh, updated information. And this pertains to uh, a media witness who was uh, a witness to Jack Jones's execution. Um, uh, I have no way of directly communicating. Uh, talking to Mitch. He does not state in his tweets who that media witness is, but let me share it with you because he breaks it down minute by minute. He says at 7.04, according to a media witness, Jack Jones started the statement, which we've heard before, a lengthy statement. At 7.06, two minutes later, he finished the statement, and that's when the microphone went off. You and Marcy were just talking about that. At 7.06, so within the same minute, his eyes closed, but according to this media witness, his lips were still moving. At around 7.07, so roughly a few seconds later or a minute later,
the lips of Jack Jones stopped moving. And shortly after that, at 7.07, the Department of Corrections started putting tongue depressors in his mouth. And Mitch's last tweet goes on to say at, at 7.11, so roughly nine minutes before his uh, actual time of death, Mitch says, and again, this is according to a media witness who he did not identify, says, uh, Jones appears first consciousness test was being conducted. They were moving his head, lifting his eyelids, but his chest was still moving. That could be a critical statement. We'll see how this unfolds. In the meantime, Marcel Williams' execution is on hold. We are waiting a final word to see if this will, in fact, move forward, if not. But let's rewind the tape, if you will, and talk about Jack Jones's execution. That happened at 7 o'clock earlier this evening. Um, it started at around 7.06, and his time of death was pronounced at 7.20. I want to bring in Fox 16's Stephanie Sharp, who has been in direct communication with some of these family members, uh, the, the victims here in this case, and they witnessed that execution. And from what we know about Jack Jones's execution, at least from some media accounts, is that it was quick and there weren't any complications. Yeah, that's right. Uh, earlier or shortly after Jack Jones's execution, we did see a, a van full of uh, family members of the Phillips family here. They did, uh, you know, talk to the media um, about, you know, made a statement to the media shortly after that execution, um, you know, and just kind of talking about, you know, they've been waiting for this for two decades. You know, they've been waiting for closure. However, uh, earlier you were talking about um, the statement that Jack Jones made. Well, the ADC spokesperson did say, that it was a lengthy statement. We actually got um, a copy of that statement. I just want to read a bit for you right now. It says, and this is Jack Jones's last words. It says in part, I want people to know that when I came to prison, I made up my mind that I would be a better person when I left than when I came in. I have no doubt in my mind that is that I would make every effort to do this. I'd, I'd like to think that I've accomplished this. I made every effort to be a good per person. I practiced Buddhism and studied physics. I met the right people and did the right things. There are no words and would there are no words that would fully express my remorse for the pain that I caused. So, um, you know, he had a lengthy statement there before his execution, and we did. Um, were our Mitch McCoy, who's inside the media room right now, he was able to hear from the family. You know, they they spoke in front of the uh, media earlier today. Day. Um, and I believe it's uh, Lacey, um, the, the young daughter that was uh, beaten and left for dead uh, by Jack Jones in Bald Knob years ago. You know, she, she spoke with the media, and I believe we have a piece of, of what she said right here. Just a minute. Um, there's definitely a different mood in the, in the air right now, um, a little more tension, a little less tension in different ways. Um, I would like to thank the governor and his office and everyone that works with him and for him. I would like to thank the Attorney General and her office and everyone that works with her and for her. Um, they have gone beyond, you know, and, and took their time and their life for my family and, and, and our life. And I appreciate that and um, it will never be forgotten what, what um, they have helped to, to do. And what they've done is um, help serve justice. They, they took care of, of what was ruled in 96, and they gave our family some justice. So um, thank you, and appreciate everything. My name is Lacey Phillips, L-A-C-E-Y-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, and that's my uh, maiden name. My last name now is Seal, S-E-A-L. So you heard right there from Lacey Phillips. That was the um, young daughter of Mary Phillips, who was uh, she was raped and she was killed by Jack Jones. Uh, Lacey Phillips, there she was uh, beaten by Jack Jones, left to die. However, um, she did not die. She's here today. Uh, we were told by uh, a media witness earlier today that she did not want to watch the ex execution, but she wanted to be here on prison grounds uh, when it did happen. Yeah, think about that. She was 11 years old at the time of that uh, Jack Jones entered that office building, grabbed her, tied her up to a chair, and then proceeded to go out and execute her mother. But now here we are 20 years later, and justice has been served, at least in this particular case. But we are in a holding pattern as it pertains to the next scheduled execution. I'm speaking specifically about Marcel Williams. Will it happen or will it go down to the last minute? We're in a holding pattern. We'll have more 
on Fox 16 News at 9 right after this break. Medical, medical conditions that um, the chemicals might not work on him as they did um, someone, an otherwise healthy inmate. Did, did you see any problems? Not at all. And that was Tracy Whitaker. She is a, a newspaper reporter and was a witness to the Jack Jones uh, uh, killing tonight. She works for the Daily Citizen out of White County. As you said, she didn't really see anything at all that raised an eyebrow for her. However, the attorneys did. They filed, um, they obviously filed a brief, and now Marcel Williams has somewhat of a re reprieve, at least for now. The temporary so, stay. Temporary stay of execution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's very, very interesting, and we've talked about this a lot tonight, how um, it's so unpredictable in these cases because you never really know. There was a point in time where we knew that there were no pending litigation. Right. And then all of a sudden, this comes. And really, this litigation um, was a closed matter. This had already been appealed up to the Eighth Circuit, Supreme, uh, Eighth Circuit to the Supreme Court. Um, but this is a new challenge, right? This is a new challenge. It's raising an issue that's related to that case. And Marcel Williams had raised concerns that his weight would factor in and be difficult or make it difficult for the midazolam and the other drug protocols to actually work as they were intended to work. And now they're pointing to evidence from, and, and evidence is always sort of um, uh, through the eye of the beholder in some ways um, because there have been media accounts um, even the media witnesses that Jack Jones lips continue to move after his statement um, the microphones go dead after the end of that statement they are cut off and there's no more audio to the witnesses and so there is sort of that question mark of okay well was there gasping because 
no one could hear that. Yes. But at the same time, we're also hearing from media witnesses that he did not appear to suffer, that he seemed like it was peaceful mm -hmm. relatively. And so my question has been to the attorney general's office is what is the process here? And um, obviously, if the judge issues a final order that can be appealed to the Eighth Circuit, but we don't even have that yet. yet. And how do you investigate an execution that has just occurred in federal court that is 45 minutes to an hour away. Exactly. And and same as as all the other executions, the death warrant expires at midnight. From what and, I understand. And in most of these, we've gone up until midnight. Now, just to uh, provide a bit of clarity, and you can see Marcel Williams sitting there. You can see he is a big man. The issue has been with both Marcel Williams and Jack Jones, who was who is now deceased, that because of their weight, there could be some problems um, getting a needle in a vein, Accessing so that they vein. can actually pump through the midazolam for starters. And one of the things that has been brought up in this motion, um, and again, the response from the AG's office says, you're sort of taking this out of context. Yes, we did attempt to put a central line into which Jones had agreed to into his neck. That was unsuccessful. We put in two IVs just like we would do with Marcel Williams. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so there was nothing torturous about it. Okay. Ultimately, Judge Baker will decide. Okay. Stay of execution in place right now for Marcel Williams, who was scheduled to die at 8.15 tonight. We're still following it. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.
And we have breaking news tonight. We are continuing our coverage with the Arkansas executions. We told you that Jack Jones, guilty of, ki of killing Mary Phillips back in 1995 in Bald Knob, has been put to death. He was executed around 7.20 tonight. Uh, and then Marcel Williams was supposed to be executed at 8.15 this evening. However, there is a stay of execution in place. Marcel Williams guilty for killing Stacy Erickson. He actually admitted to it. He raped and beat her. He kidnapped her from a Jacksonville gas station and then made her go to several ATMs and withdrew money before he actually raped, beat, and choked her to death. And then he buried her body near the Arkansas River in North Little Rock. We are waiting to hear word on his fate this evening. We're going to send it back to my co-anchor, Kevin Kelly. He's at the Cummins unit. And uh, Kevin, this is kind of reminiscent of what we've gone through basically with all of the executions so far. It gets caught up with court issues and sometimes it can go late into the night. It's already 925. Yeah, but th th this particular case is, is very interesting in light of the arguments that are being made by Williams' lawyers and attorneys. I want to bring in the governor's spokesperson, J.R. Davis, who's kind enough to join us now. Uh, some interesting developments just within the last hour and so. How is the governor responding uh, to these latest developments? Well, obviously, our, our focus is with the families uh, and, and obviously the families of uh, Stacy Erickson, and that's what we're focused on at this time, and the justice will be carried out. Uh, at the uh, 11th hour here again, you're seeing that these, these claims are being uh, brought to the courts and they're throwing things against the wall to see what sticks. Uh, I can tell you this, that everything uh, about the execution of Jack Jones was carried out flawlessly uh, by the ADC staff, uh, and, and period. And some of the media witness accounts, at least from what we've heard, uh, backs, backs that up. So what you're saying right now in terms of these claims, nothing is sticking. Well, I mean, nothing should stick. I, I should say that. I mean, the fact of the matter is the ADC, their staff, Director Kelly, they've been preparing for this for months. Uh, they've shown um, that they are uh, well versed in this, that they can do their job uh, and their responsibilities and carry those out. Uh, as far as any claims that something went awry in there is absolutely false, uh, and 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 that's what that's what the message should be out there. Again, there's a lot of uh, litigation wrangling right now, and what people need to know at home is that ADC uh, um, absolutely fulfilled their duties uh, perfectly, uh, and 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 that's where the execution of Jack Jones took place. We did hear from some media witnesses mm -hmm. that uh, Jones was asked for final words, and he had a lengthy response. And at the end of his response, the mic was cut off. But some witnesses did see, uh, did say that that um, just being told that the stay has just been lifted. Um, okay. and so uh, obviously, this is this is a game changer. Here we are again. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And so that's good. Another good step for justice tonight as we move forward uh, to give closure to the uh, Stacey Erickson family that they haven't had in a long time. All right. So that's right. important news. But real quick, yeah, yeah. in terms of some media witnesses reported yeah. seeing his mouth move as if he was saying something, but the mic was cut off. Any yeah. any update on that? Well, as you mentioned earlier, he did give a, a longer uh, than normal uh, uh, final words. And once the once he quit talking, the mic was muted, and all he did was lean back and say a few words to Director Kelly, and I think it was something along the lines of, you know, Wendy, I know, you know how I feel about you. That was it. It was just uh, continuing of some of the words that he uh, uh, gave, paused, said something to Wendy Kelly, leaning back, and that was it. I appreciate the clarification. No that's some important news. Yeah. Well, thank you for letting me do it. All I right. appreciate it. Thank all you. Right. Uh, so that's the latest from the governor, but uh, as I've just been told, too, the, the stay has been lifted. So at this point in time, the execution for Marcel Williams uh, will move forward. At least that is the situation right now. As we know, the death certificate expires at the stroke of midnight. Here we are at 930. Uh, so the clock is still ticking. And as we all know, uh, things can change in a minute or, as Donna put it earlier, on a dime. We're going to continue to follow these developments here at the Cummins unit. Keep it right here on Fox 16. We'll be right back.
Breaking news, here you have it. Judge has lifted the stay of execution on inmate Marcel Williams. Execution can proceed. This from Judd Deary, who is the spokesperson for the Attorney General's office. We've been trying to stay on top of this situation that definitely has moving parts. We told you that earlier tonight, Jack Jones, the other inmate, death row inmate, he's already been put to death. Uh, and Marcel Williams was scheduled to die at 8.15 tonight, and then all of a sudden things changed because of the stay of execution. It was just lifted just moments ago, but I will tell you that just because we tell you that the stay of uh, execution has been lifted, that doesn't mean that it's over in terms of the legalities. I mean, theoretically, he could um, challenge that and appeal that to the Eighth Circuit, um, but timing now is a question. There's no stay in place that prevents the execution from proceeding. And just because ongoing issues are there out in the court system doesn't necessarily prevent an execution from proceeding. The AG's office certainly um, is interpreting this as being able to proceed. Mm -hmm. um, and so barring any sort of intervention by the Eighth Circuit, if they were to appeal it, it's not automatic. They would have to appeal that. Um, and so at this point, uh, there was clearly a hearing um, in reading the order um, on the, the lift, to, uh, lift of stay. Um, it appears there was some sort of hearing held perhaps by phone um, in regard to this motion and um, in the response, it says, for the reasons stated in the court's hearing on Mr. Williams' emergency motion, the court denies Mr. Williams' emer emergency mo motion. Okay. So something in there in, in the hearing with the attorneys um, made the court lift the stay. Right. And so, um, but we didn't anticipate seeing this motion come in. I don't think anyone did. So... Um, I'm going to hold out on, on trying to predict what you know will what? come next. I think that's wise because we just don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but we're going to continue following it, and that's why we're going to go back out to the Cummins unit with Kevin Kelly to find out um, if you're hearing anything. I, I know you just spoke with uh, J.R. Davis, the spokesperson for the governor, um, and that's when you found out that the stay had been lifted. Um, does it appear as everything as though everything is a go? I know the witnesses were taken to where they were supposed to be. Do we know if Marcel Williams is in the death chamber waiting? Yeah, and that's kind of what I want to touch on, because an interesting fact, before all of this unfolded, shortly after Jack Jones's execution, uh, the focus turned to Marcel Williams. And the next round of media witnesses were put in a van, which was parked right behind me here at the media center. That was at 745. That's roughly two hours ago. The van has not returned. Uh, so they have been taken to the execution chamber along with the other witnesses who uh, are scheduled to potentially witness uh, the execution of Marcel Williams when and if that happens. One of the media witnesses is our very own uh, Jesse Tenure, and um, she was uh, patiently waiting for her turn. That turn has come up, uh, but she, along with the other media pool representatives, as well as the witnesses, are all on a holding pattern yet again uh, in light of this. But as of right now, as you and Marcy just uh, alluded to and talked about, that stay has been lifted. So from our vantage point, uh, there is nothing... Uh, to indicate that this execution is moving forward, but uh, based on previous experiences, the Arkansas Department of Correction, once they've been told that the stay has been lifted, it's, it's full steam ahead until otherwise. In the meantime, protesters have been gathering all day uh, out in front of the governor's mansion, not uh, just uh, uh, to protest the execution of Jack Jones, but also the, uh, the potential one later this evening of Marcel Williams for reaction. We want to check in with Fox 16, Charmaine Nero. Charmaine. That's exactly right, um, Kevin. Out here, a lot of people just sitting around waiting. It's very similar to the way it was uh, on Thursday when they were waiting to figure out what new developments would come with uh, Liddell Lee. So right now, a lot of people are just standing around kind of um, around each other just trying to figure out you know if this is going to happen um they were holding a prayer uh vigil earlier when jack jones was um 
executed earlier today and after they had a moment of silence. So right now, it's just a lot of waiting, and it seems a lot calmer out here, too. I remember being out here on Thursday, and there was a, a tension in the air. A lot of people remaining optimistic all the way up until the end, until they actually uh, realized that um, about 10 minutes later that Lee had been executed. So that's kind of the feeling I get right now is that people are just waiting for any new developments that they have. So I'm going to be out here for the rest of the night and uh, try to keep you updated on what's going on out here with the protest. Uh, going to send it to break now. Back to you. And we continue to follow our breaking news story tonight. Marcel Williams' stay of execution has been lifted. There are lots of moving parts here, so things could still change. But there is a likelihood that he will be put to death tonight unless things change. His victim, Stacy Erickson, was a young mother of two. She was killed while her husband was deployed overseas. Let's now just take time to look back at this case. Marcel Williams is my boogeyman. He doesn't deserve any mercy. On November 20th, 1994, Trista Wasik, then 12 years old, was babysitting 23-year-old Stacy Erickson's two little kids while she was at work. Wasik was the last person to see Erickson alive. I never knew that cold November morning would change my life and countless others forever. While Erickson was getting gas in Jacksonville, 24-year-old Marcel Williams forced her into his car at gunpoint, drove her to several ATMs to make a total of 18 transactions, then raped and strangled her in an abandoned storage shed. He buried her body in a shallow grave near a smokestack in North Little Rock that can still be seen today in the city's skyline. I still remember everything like it was yesterday. 
Sorry. Two days after Erickson's murder, Williams kidnapped and raped two other women within 12 hours. 22 years later, one of them came all the way from New Jersey to look Williams in the eye once more and ask the Arkansas Parole Board to spare his life. This man has turned his life around and he's found God. He's serving God. A remorseful Williams couldn't hold back his tears. I'm so sorry. I wish I could take it back, but I can't. So does Wasik. Her friend's death still a hole in her heart after more than two decades. I still think of her every day and always will. And there you saw the history behind why Marcel Williams was sentenced to die. And you heard him there for himself saying, asking the clemency board if he could take it back. He would, but he can't. His stay of execution has been lifted. He was scheduled to die tonight at 8.15, and um, it is now 9.42, and we just found out moments ago that the stay was lifted. Anything can happen in terms of legalities, but it appears to be all systems go at the Cummins unit, where my co-anchor, Kevin Kelly, is right now. And hopefully he has some new information for us. I know Jesse Tenure, who's a reporter for Fox 16, she will be, if this execution should happen, she will be one of the witness to, witnesses to it tonight. Kevin. Yeah, we still have, Donna, about uh, two hours and 17 minutes before uh, Marcel Williams' death certificate expires. So as we've been saying, almost like a broken record, anything can happen between now and then. Jesse Tenure is at the execution chamber where this is scheduled to take place uh, if it's given the green light. I've also just been informed that, <clears throat> according to Mitch McCoy, the Arkansas uh, Department of Corrections spokesperson, Solomon Graves, who's becoming a familiar name, says it's still unknown if Marcel Williams actually made it to the death chamber before that stay was issued and then once again lifted. Um, so that's an interesting development as well. He also added just a second ago here, not a lot of movement in the media room, still waiting on updates from the Department of Corrections spokesperson Solomon Graves. So we're kind of in a holding pattern. Um, unsure if, if Solomon, uh, or excuse me, if um, Marcel Williams has been taken over to the execution chamber. We know the witnesses that are there for both the media as well as other witnesses that will uh, tentatively see this, but uh, with the clock ticking, we are still waiting to see if Marcel Williams will become the third uh, death row inmate uh, here in the state of Arkansas to be executed. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll continue to monitor the situation, but keep it right here on Fox 16.
Welcome back, everyone. Marcel Williams is scheduled to be executed tonight. That is, of course, if everything goes according to plan. Uh, back in 1994, he abducted and killed 22-year-old Stacy Erickson. He buried her body near an Arkansas river. He admitted kidnapping her, beating her, raping her, and even choking her. Uh, her body was eventually found several days later, and then he was sentenced to die in 1997, roughly 20 years ago. Fast forward to tonight, and we're in a holding pattern once again. Williams is scheduled is the second inmate scheduled to be executed this evening, uh, but legal ramifications have put this kind of on a hold up until the last few minutes when a last minute stay was lifted. If and when the green light is given, Marcel Williams will be taken into the execution chamber. And from that point on, the hope, at least for the Arkansas Department of Correction and the state of Arkansas, is that everything will go smoothly. According to the state's lethal injection procedure, the executioner will enter the chamber prior to the inmate's scheduled time of execution. They will inspect what's called the injection drug box, ensuring all chemicals are accounted for. The gurney will be positioned so the deputy director and executioner can directly see the inmate's face and IV infusion site. At that point, the condemned inmate will be brought in and strapped down. The IV team, who are licensed and have at least two years' experience, will then insert two IV bags containing normal saline. When the flow is secure and safe, the warden will give the green light. The IV team will first administer two syringes containing 250 milligrams of midazolam, a sedative that is supposed to make the inmate unconscious. If the inmate is not unconscious, backup syringes of midazolam and saline will be given in a secondary infusion site. There will then be a five-minute waiting period, at which point the deputy director will confirm the inmate is in fact unconscious. Once that is determined, the second drug will be administered. Two syringes containing 50 milligrams of vecuronium bromide, a paralytic. Then comes the third and final drug. Two syringes of 120 milliequivalents of potassium chloride will begin to flow, ultimately causing the inmate's heart to stop. Well, that's the perfect case scenario, whether or not that will be the case. If and when Marcel Williams is executed, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, in light of these developments and accusations that were made earlier in the day by Williams attorneys as it pertains to the execution of Jack Jones, I'm sure uh, the witnesses, including the media witnesses, will be watching this execution extremely closely. One thing that has to be factored into the equation, Donna, as you well know, Marcel Williams weighs 400 pounds. And the argument that his attorneys have been making all up until this point is that the lethal drugs that will be used when and if he is executed may have a different impact and effect on his body because of his size as well as his medical health conditions. Donna. And, of course, Kevin, they made the same uh, argument for Jack Jones, who was executed earlier tonight. Um, Mitch McCoy, he sent out a, a tweet about four minutes ago. He said, not a lot of movement in the media room. Of course, it's the media room where we're waiting to get mm -hmm. information. Um, Solomon Graves, who is the PR person for the Arkansas Department of Correction, he sits by a phone. He waits to hear whether the execution has happened. Um, and that's what our media people wait to hear. They're able to relay that information to us. And Marcy, as, as we've been talking pretty much all night, especially when we were on Facebook Live tonight, how, you know, this is the point in time where we really get absolutely no information. We go through that period where we're not told anything. So mm -hmm. as far as we know, an execution could be going on as we speak, or there could be preparations for it, or it could be over. We just don't know, and we're not going to sit here and speculate. Right. I also want to read the governor's. We're going to talk to you in just a minute, Marcy, but I want to read Governor Hutchinson's statement that he issued after Jack Jones was ex executed. The governor never asks for this responsibility, but I accept it as part of the solemn pledge I made to uphold the law. Jack Jones expressed his willingness to proceed today, and as we hoped, this will bring closure 
to the Phillips family. That, of course, coming from the governor. J.R. Davis was uh, complaining a little bit earlier when that stay of execution was in place for Marcel Williams that, you know, 11th hour attorneys start throwing everything up against the wall, hoping something will stick. Mm -hmm. The last thing that they threw did not stick. It did not stick. No. I mean, and we don't know why or what discussions were had in that hearing, but it did not stick. And for right now, executions are proceeding. All right. We'll be back right after this.